don't know why not. Should be good. <laughs> okay, Chris, your mic is on. This one's only here in case she needs to talk. Wheel we'll tax, okay. Zoning. Oh, wow, these are all different. Good. Exciting little night. All right, you guys, it's 6 01, and we get going. Alderman Johnson, you in? Hey, what did the Bullfrogs call their stadium? We're watching that one. The Bullfrogs are announcing their big stadium tonight. So. Okay, we're... Chris. Could we get going? Join me as the person voting. Ready? We good, Celestine? Yes, ma'am. All right. All right, good evening. I want to call to order the meeting of the Common Council for Tuesday, July 17th. It's my understanding everybody is logged into the meeting. Clerk? Twelve are present, Your Honor. Okay, terrific. All right, well then we'll we'll proceed. I just want to welcome everybody tonight. We have a lot on the agenda, so let's begin. Um, if you'd all please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance and then remain standing for the invocation. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Heavenly Father, as we enjoy the summer months, we thank you for all those who help make our community an extra special place to live. We're grateful for our Parks Department, who work diligently to assure the people of Green Bay have an enjoyable and educational experiences during the summer. We're grateful for the volunteers who work throughout the summer months to bring us unique venues in summer music and outdoor activities. As we work to better our communities here in Green Bay, we pray that throughout these United States and around the world, we work to make relations and communities better for all. How proud we all were when the whole world came together and prayed and practiced to rescue the soccer team in Thailand. We ask that you always watch over first responders and their families as they protect so many of your people. We appreciate their efforts each and every day. Let us always be mindful of people in need those who are hungry, our constituents in need of gainful employment, families who struggle with domestic violence, and neighbors who seek adequate housing. Help us always work together to continually address these needs. We ask you to always watch over our military, especially those serving on the USS Green Bay. We ask this all in your name, amen. All right, with that, we can move to the approval of the minutes. Um, there's a motion by Alderman Andy Nicholson, seconded by Alderman Randy Scannell, to approve the minutes of the June 19th meeting. Anyone wish to speak to these? Any corrections or deletions? All right, seeing no lights, all in favor of approval of the minutes, please signify by saying aye. And those opposed, nay, the ayes have it, and the minutes for the June 19th meeting have been approved. Approval of the agenda. All right, so there's a motion by Alderman Scannell, second by Alderperson Dorf, um, to approve the agenda that is before you. Uh, anything here you want to change? Uh, see no lights. All in favor of the agenda, please signify by saying aye. aye. And those opposed, nays. The ayes have it. And the agenda, it's, it's on the table there for our, our visitors or guests, um, before you has been approved. Report by the mayor. Um, so it's nice to see everybody. Uh, that that month off is interesting, isn't it? But I'm glad we're we're back here. To we've got a lot of work to do tonight. Say so just two things. Um, 
First of all, I just want to thank all of you who helped out with the 4th of July, and um, that was just a great event. A little bit of rain, but nonetheless, 100,000 people came down here and had a most enjoyable day. But I really want to give a shout-out to Alderman Randy Scannell. He took the lead. Relax, Randy. Um, he took the lead on... Um, the whole Liberty Bell ceremony, which is the proper way to start the 4th of July. Uh, it just reminds us of 242 years of independence and um, a little bit of a history lesson there for all of us, but uh, just a great way to kick off uh, the, the holiday. And then, of course, that went into another nine hours of festivities, and that was led by uh, Alderman Brian Johnson. And I just want to thank you and your staff for all the support. I, we had great reports from many, many people on the 4th of July, so I want to thank you two especially and everyone who, who participated. And then secondly, and this is just, uh, I sent you a letter last Friday, and I just want to follow up with you over the next month. Um, uh, I think all of you attended my State of the City, and that's when I lay out what I want to get done in the next year. And I just want to discuss term limits with, with you. And um, we can sit down and talk. Three of you have come in already, and one of you have called, and um, just I don't know exactly what it looks like yet, but I, I think something to talk about. Um, I'd like to uh, be part and lead this initiative, but um, it's going to take us all working together. So you know, in the next month or so, if we could get together and talk, that's what my letter requested. That's what I'd like to do. That will conclude my report. We're on to announcements. Okay, let me get this. Wait, Mike, I'm sorry, you guys. Details? I'm sure somebody hit announcements. Mike? As I say every meeting, we have a new software system that um, is getting good reviews. I wouldn't call them rave just yet, but... All right, so Alderman Johnson will begin with you. Announcements, Alderman Johnson. Uh, we have a business uh, in my district, Monsu Bakery, who today is celebrating 10 years in business, so I just wanted to give them a quick shout out. Uh, no business is ever easy, and, and 10 years is quite an accomplishment, so uh, congratulations to them. Secondly, and this might be a little bit uh, self-serving, but it, the Ignite Market, which on Broadway runs um, down in the district, is going to be hosting their second one of the year uh, this Saturday, and that event was recognized by the Wisconsin Main Street Program as the best special event in the state of Wisconsin. So I encourage everybody to come out on that uh, for Saturday night uh, around the Neville Museum from 5 to 10. And then third, uh, and lastly, um, Habitat for Humanity, I saw, uh, I posted this on my, my, my page and it, it got a lot of engagement. People were really excited about this new program that they've come out with, $1,500 for small repairs. Um, so if I encourage all of you, if you have residents in your district that would benefit from the use of that program, um, you know, the threshold to access to some of that funds isn't as stringent is, is of course, building a house. So I encourage uh, all of you to consider that program. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Alderman. Thank you, Alderman. Alderman Stoyer, announcements. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Um, this weekend, uh, the Artery Artur, Inc. will be having a uh, festival, and uh, the Strike Accord group that I belong to is working along with them, and uh, we're encouraging folks to come out. It's Friday, Saturday, and I believe Sunday. So it'll be around the downtown area and the various music festival uh, activities. Uh, there will be an article in the paper on Thursday, the Press Gazette, talking about it in the entertainment section. So thank you. All right. Thank you, Alderman. Alderman Randy Scannell. Thank you, Your Honor. I, thank you, Your Honor. I also have three items. Uh, first of all, steam. Uh, steam Engine 6 is coming up July 25th. Always a great time and very educational. 6.30 to 9 at the Neville. Uh, then there's Fit in the Park, uh, one of their programs, Pound. Join Dana from Edge. Music-inspired fitness for a new, exciting workout that includes lightly weighted ripstick and an infusion of cardio and strength with drumming every Wednesday on City Deck at 5 p.m. And then lastly, Summer in the Park ev uh, event uh, Thursday concerts, Whitney Park, 11.30 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. Enjoy live music over lunch at this family-oriented event. Children enjoy the playground area. They have a dog park area for the dogs. This Thursday, Talk of the Town performs. Thank you, Your Honor. All right. Thank you, Alderman. Okay, I haven't seen any other lights. All right, Clerk. We're on to appointments. New appointment, Economic Development Authority, Michael Piat, and Water Commission, Marty Briggs. 
I would need a motion. Second. A motion to approve by Alderman Scannell, um, Second. seconded by Alderperson Dorf. If you please use the board here. You were in earlier. Mayor, I got a question. All right. Um, Alderman Nicholson. Uh, Marty Briggs. Yes. I'm going to support this, but under his um, description or bio, what does business leadership, experience in business leadership mean? Um, I know he teaches at NWTC. Do you do you any more Celestine? I mean, you talk. Okay. It was more the teaching, I thought. Did, I mean, did Marty write this? He, okay. Uh, that's all I wanted to know. Thank all you. Right. Thanks. Okay. Could you use the board here, please? This is on uh, the Economic Development Water Commission appointees. What's that? Thank you, and those two pass unanimously. Okay, Chris. We're on to reappointments. Board of Review, Richard Laurent. All right, there's a motion by uh, Alderman Scannell, now seconded by Alderman Bill Galvin, uh, for the reappointment of Richard Laurent. If you'd please use the board here. Oops. Alderman Vanderlees. John. Okay. There you go. Right. And that passage and asked me as well. Thank you. We're on to public hearings. Zoning ordinance number 9-18, an ordinance creating a plan unit development overlay district for properties located at 320 South Military Avenue and the 1600 block of Western Avenue. Zoning ordinance number 10-18, an ordinance amending the sign standards for an existing planned unit development located at 865 Lombardi Avenue. And general ordinance number 12-18, an ordinance amending Green Bay Municipal Code section 13-1911 to amend the expiration of approval of a planned unit developments. Uh, well, this is the public hearing, so we'll, we'll see what the public, and then we'll get into the to the ordinances. But um, right now, as the clerk lists, this is the public hearing on the three, uh, two zoning items and the one general ordinance. This is item I in your report, um, items one, two, and three. Is there anyone here from the public who would like to comment on any of those three items the clerk just stated? Um, the 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 PUD on, on Military Avenue, or the signage uh, at 865 Lombardi. Uh, or amending the municipal code um, with the planned unit developments. Anyone wishing to be heard? Anyone want to speak to this? All right, we'll let the record show no one came forward. We're on to ordinances third reading. You may under suspension of the rules adopt ordinances one through five together with one roll call vote. All right, there's a motion by Alderman Scannell and a second by Alderperson Dorf to suspend the rules um, so we can take all these up at one time. All in favor of suspension, please signify by saying aye. Aye. And those opposed, nays. Ayes have it. Alderman Vanderlees, did you want to adopt these? All right, there's a motion by Alderman Vanderlees to adopt, second by Alderman Scannell. Can we use the board for this? These are uh, the third reading ordinances, one, two, three, four, and five. This is moving along. All right, and those ordinances are approved by the City Council as well. Thank you. We're on to report of the Redevelopment Authority, July 10th, 2018. Second. All right, there's a motion by Alderman Scannell, second by Alderman Nicholson to approve the report of the Redevelopment Authority, 
and that was for the meeting held on July 10th, 2018. Are there any items in this report you wish to handle separately? Two. Item two. All right, hearing none others, all in favor of the remainder of that report, please signify by saying aye. Aye. And those opposed nays, the ayes have it. So items one and three have been approved. What are your wishes regarding item two? So motion by Alderman Scannell, second by Alderman Stoyer to approve this. We'll go to Alderman Weary. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Now, I, I know this is later in our agenda as well, I believe, under finance. So right. if it's more appropriate to handle there, we, we certainly can. This is just a recommendation. Um, any advice from legal? Would it be better under the, the finance one, or can we handle it here? No, we talked about that. I mean, it, this is the redevelopment authority. It went to finance. It's the, it's the same thing. It's $2 million for the initial investment in the shipyard. So why don't we just take it up here? we got closed session on here. If you'd like, it's pretty much the same thing, Sounds two good. different committees. So I'll leave that up to you. Sounds good. Um, I had a couple questions perhaps for Director Vonk. One is, did we have any progress on... Uh, purchasing the one loan building that I had brought up last time that's kind of right in the middle of development. You can take it one at a time? All right. Yeah. All right, Dr. Bonk? Uh, yes, I believe you're referring to the our place family restaurant. Um, we presented an offer to the parties. Um, the parties have until the end of the month to accept the offer uh, or come back for negotiations. Okay. I, I was wondering, was the offer less than what the property was worth? I would prefer not to discuss negotiations and an open session of where, where we are at. Right. I'm, I'm just curious. That's, rumor has it that they were offered less than what it's worth in the property across the street that we paid a million dollars for. Of course, we gave, we gave more than it was worth. So I, I would be curious to hear about that. Um, Should I move to go into closed session? Do you have sure. one more question? Or do you, okay. All right. All right, so we have a motion by uh, uh, Alderperson Dorf, seconded by Alderperson Lefebvre, um, to move into closed session. It, it's proper to read the Common Council may convene. Would you do that? Yes, Let me get your mic. Common Council may convene in closed session pursuant to sections 19.85 I or L D, Wisconsin statutes, for purposes of deliberating and enforcing the sale of public properties, investing in public funds, or conducting other specified public business as necessary for competitive or bargaining reasons. The council may thereafter reconvene in open session pursuant to section 19.852, Wisconsin statutes, to report the results of the closed session and consider the balance of the agenda. All right, thank you. So you'll use your board here. And um, again, the motion in the second was to move into closed sessions for the reasons stated by the older person. So that passes on a vote of 10 to 2. So um, I'm going to hit the pause button for the uh, taping of this. Alderperson Dorf. Uh, motion to go back into Second. All right, there's a motion by Alderperson Dorf, and that was seconded by Alderman Nicholson to go back into regular open session. All in favor of that motion, please signify by saying aye. Aye. And those opposed nays, the ayes have it. So we're back in open session, um, obviously discussing <laughs> item two uh, under the Report of the Redevelopment Authority. Oldman, where you still have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I appreciate the information in closed session. Uh, it answered my questions. Uh, I have two more. Uh, the first one will probably be for our finance director. Um, three, four months ago, we were advised we had a pretty formal letter from our bond council that we were dangerously high in our borrowing and it wasn't wise to borrow more and it just happened to coincide of course with with borrowing 1.5 million or so for for Colburn pool and that uh, that helped sway things and, and push it in the direction it went so I wanted to know has that recommendation changed do we have another letter saying well you know what four months have gone by we're, we're not not in danger anymore the director was before no, nothing has changed from Moody's. Um, the only difference in this case is one's general fund borrowing, and this would be TID borrowing. Okay. 
appreciate it. Thank you. And then uh, Director Vonk, uh, myself and I know a lot of people I know who live in that area are very concerned about the West Athletics thing. And I brought it up last time. Um, most people, the students, the parents, and coaches who are at West don't want to see West High play there. Now, you're going to get maybe a different answer from the higher ups in the school district because they probably see it as a cheap way to not have to build one at West. Well, I can tell you the West High football coach is uh, fundraising right now and, and, and would like to go after that quarter million dollars from the NFL. And if we build one down here, guess what? There's not going to be any money, any quarter million dollars for West. So, um, what can you tell me about the West High Athletics? Because right now we're doing some engineering and architecture work, so I would imagine we're going to try and plan for whatever future use. Sure. Uh, we have been working with Mr. Uh, Tim Flood at the district office. Um, I believe he's the director for co-curricular activities. Um, myself, uh, co-director Anderson uh, and Ditchite. Um, and been working with him. Um, one of the things that we have now, if this moves forward tonight, um, is an opportunity to present at least a little bit more refined scope of a facility um, you know, to them in, in terms of will this fit their needs. Um, and I think one important thing to look at is, uh, I know we've discussed um, West High School playing here, but I think we would design the facility um, so that it could serve the whole school district, um, you know, whether it's West East, I mean, any other high schools uh, who could potentially use this facility, um, you know, whether for games, for practice, or other um, types of activities. And so I'd want to, you know, make sure that we work with them uh, to design a facility. I know um, some concerns have been brought up about, um, you know, bleachers, seating, concessions, press box, security. Um, I think those are things that we're going to be putting into consideration as we move from this concept plan into the actual design. Um, and then I think one of the things that we'll look at in the design process is, you know, making sure we have a number of alternatives. Uh, and that is, you know, we'll have the base, you know, field and berms, um, but then what would be the additional cost for, um, you know, providing some of these additional features like the bleachers, press box, um, you know, secure fencing, concessions, those things. Uh, and then as a trade-off for what would be the revenue potentially we'd be able to generate from uh, a lease or an agreement with the school district. Um, so I, I think in terms of, you know, West's decision to play here or not, um, you know, I, I think that's a school district decision. Um, but as far as the, the city is concerned, we would like to see the school district um, in, in some way, shape, or form, you know, participate in, in terms of using this uh, event space. Thank you. Yeah, I, I don't disagree that might, you might see an occasional game there or some kind of special event but I know you know Southwest obviously Mr. Dahl and in the, in the group and they spent a million dollars on a brand new field they have a great facility over there I can't see them wanting to, to ship everybody downtown when they have a beautiful facility uh, East just spent a lot of money on their field with the Packers uh, Preble I think is well underway to get their field so I, I don't really see a lot of the, the high schools doing too much down here I, I would just like uh, some confirmation Director Vonk that this action if it passes tonight in no way commits the city or West High School to holding their athletic activities here? Good. No, it, to... it would not. Okay, I think that's that's important for the, the public to know because they're, they're working hard to, on their own to get a field at West, and I don't want them to think that this, this cans it right here. So I think that's the end of my questions. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. Alderman Vanderleest. Thank you, Mayor. My thoughts are on the $2 million that I don't think anybody really took a look at uh, our general fund where the money that we take in and why don't we work that two million right into our regular operating budget and not bond for this two million we're quick to bond for you know just about everything my thoughts are why don't we did anybody really look at trying to do it without bonding the two million right now of course in other words the redevelopment authority are, you know, they're, they're quick to say, yeah, let's bond two million. Well, the bonding has a consequence. You know, we bonded five million for Bay Beach, and now we're gonna bond another two million. And you know, when we talked about the road program, you know, we didn't have any money. You know, we, we had a, you know, we were, we're trying to put in a wheel tax. I, I feel that we should be looking at ways to, to do things without bonding. I think our bonding is 
you know, we, we're kind of at the limit on some of the things for bonding. And, and if a rainy day happens to come by, we won't have much money to really, you know, to dig into. You know, I, I don't think we can approve every project that comes across the desk. And if, if you don't have the money on hand, I, I think it's hard to do business. But my, my thoughts are that we should look a little, before we jump into heavy bonding, five million here, 10 million here, you know, where's this money coming from? Do we have enough economical development in the city to, to support all this? Without you know going skyrocketing on all the other things that we really want to do, my, my thoughts are we should be a little more cautious as far as how we're bonding all the, every bond for everything, and uh, just not a good way to do business for the city of Green Bay. My thoughts, I, I can't support the bonding. Thank you. Thank you, Alderperson Lefebvre. Yes, um, I really do not think the high schools would be appropriate for this because as uh, Alder Weary mentioned, they have already been spending money on what they have. They're not going to, and they also don't want to bust their students. It's not safe in a way, um, you know, and I, I just don't feel that's right. And I really don't like building something if you don't have something concrete that's going to go there. I would like to see something else um, that would be more positive that would use the field. I mean, that's a million dollars I think you're talking about spending. I, I have some concerns about that. I know there are some other things in the, in the plans that I would approve sound very good, but it's this field that I have questions on. Thank you. All right, thank you. Alderman Johnson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I, I think it's important to reiterate that, the, the, I mean, the bond for this is coming against the TID. It's not coming against the levy. I mean, that's why we created a new, a new TID down there. And, and also, I think it's important also to point out that, the, I mean, we, we, we passed this. And of course, we're, we're talking about the first phase of the funding. And so I think it's important that our discussion uh, be directed at the funding component of it. And so, um, so to that point, I do have one question, I guess, that's specifically related to the design portion of this funding process. So Dr. Vonk, if you could just verify for me or, or comment, I guess, will there be an opportunity for public input on the design process of this project? Uh, yes, uh, so two pieces. Right now, staff is preparing a request for proposals uh, for design, engineering, technical services for this project. Uh, the Redevelopment Authority made a request that they would like to see that RFP before it goes out. So it will be going back uh, to the RDA for their approval. Um, so that's a public meeting. There will be opportunity to comment on that process. Um, and then one of the things that, that we will look at in terms of one of the criteria um, is, is public involvement. Uh, as part of this, uh, I think it's important as we move forward to, you know, look at what we're designing here. Um, you know, it, it's really important to focus on some of these details. And when we talk about, you know, identified on this concept plan as a playground, well, you know, what does the community want and need in terms of, you know, specific features? And we're talking about, you know, again, the field and, and what does the community want and need in terms of specific amenities for that field? Um, and so it will be a part of, of the process. Um, in, in terms of creating this this final design. Okay, thank you. Good. All right, thank you. Alderman Scannell. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Dr. Vonk, this the, the engineering. We are looking to do a multi-purpose field, right? It's going to be soccer, uh, possibly football, possibly. Uh, uh, Croquet, yes, thank you. <laughs> Not croquet. Uh, <laughs> uh, other other sports. So that will be taken into account in engineering. And we're really not counting on any specific one sport coming in. It's going to be open to many possibilities. So if indeed the uh, school district decides they want nothing to do with it, that really has nothing to do with going forward with this, correct? Uh, correct. As, as I mentioned, I think one of the things we'll be looking for uh, in terms of a final product for the design services is uh, a list of some alternatives in terms of maybe a, a base package of, of development options uh, with some add-ons, you know, maybe for bleachers or a press box or those types of things. So as we move forward, um, you know, in the coming weeks, months to work with potential tenants or users, we'll see what interest is there. And as I said, you know, if we have revenues potentially uh, sufficient to 
you know, add on those amenities, um, I think that would be, you know, beneficial to, to move forward. But, um, you know, with that, you know, taking a step forward with the development agreement, taking a step forward with this um, allows us to continue to have those conversations and really start to refine, okay, what, uh, and as uh, Alder Johnson had said, you know, the community is looking for, um, allow us to, you know, really kind of refine exactly what we, we are building here. Alder Yes, uh, I'm done. Okay, thank you. Alderman Weary. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I did have one other question that I, I had forgotten. It's for our co-parks director, uh, Mr. Anderson. Do we have any letters of commitment by a soccer club or other sports team right now? Or is it a build it and, and hope to come, spend a million dollars and hope to come? We've had a lot of communication with uh, many different user groups, and I think a lot of them are waiting on the support to move forward. And part of that process over the next couple weeks or months, as uh, Director Vonk stated, would we, they would be involved in how this um, field and what amenities the field has in it so they can make sure that they can use it um, and we can maximize those user groups. So like he stated, everything from rugby, soccer, football, um, lacrosse, and also uh, don't forget about the festivals, concerts, um, you know, the different, it, that multi-use field would be very important to maximize the number of days we utilize this facility and get people down to that area. Right. So yes, we, we have Appreciate talked with a lot of user groups, yes. Thank you. I, I was just wondering if we had a firm commitment from anybody, not, not the other uses, but it sounds like we don't. We have We've a had a lot of interested yes. parties, but not not anybody saying you build it. Yes, we are going right. to be there. True. Okay. And then I just wanted to make one other comment on the TID borrowing. Yeah, it, it is TID borrowing, but if it fails, guess who's on the hook? Yes. We are. So I, I don't want that to sound like it's just some free money. It's play money. It's it's still we're responsible if this thing fails. Guess who's on the hook? So I don't, you know, can't just throw it out there and say, ah, it's kid money, you know, because otherwise we'd fund everything that way. <laughs> All right, thanks. All right. Yes, we will use the board on this, so. Okay, other person in the fave? Uh, Parks kind of answered a little bit of this, but I was concerned about spending for for the field, you know, prep work and everything. Uh, we spend the money, and then we have public hearings, and people don't like it at all. They want something else there. Are we going to be spending money on something that maybe we won't use? I just have a little concern about the cost on that. I wish we could kind of just... <laughs> I know things are tied together that you got to do certain things, you know, to get it done and everything. I'd almost like to see wait and make sure you got the go ahead on doing this. You got commitments or or you have uh, the backing of the community. But the one thing that Parks did mention is the uh, concerts. Now that might be something that people would be more willing, you know, to have there. I just have a little concern about that. Yeah, this doesn't buy the field. I mean, we, we talked about mm -hmm. what the money's going to be used no, for. No, I'm just saying all the, okay. the site and prep work, you're already going to start spending money on that. You have to pay for the consultants Design. and everything. You've got to pay for that ahead. What's that? You have to pay ahead for the consultants and, and the, you know, to get that set, how it's going to be put in, and you have to have that done ahead, right? You're the, paying, the design you're paying somebody for that, aren't you? Right, eight hundred thousand dollars, maybe. That's what I'm saying, eight hundred thousand. And right, right, and but say the public is really against it. Part of the Do design we? is to engage the public. Okay, I'm. I'm just, you know, I just want to make sure that we're not spending eight hundred dollars and then it's changed. Right. We're not, right. you know. Right. That's just my concern. Thank you, mm -hmm. Alderman Nicholson. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, question: If we build this stadium or this complex, are we are are the city's intentions to try to, like, are we going to charge people? Are we going to charge the groups to use the field? Is that our intention? Yeah. Um, that will be a small part of the revenue. Maybe, James, you, why don't you talk more about some leases? Sure. I'm. Oh. Oops. Yes, a, a lot of the user groups that will utilize this field will be charged. Um, and then during the process, we'll define uh, within our current, we have current agreements 
uh, for instance, shared use agreements with the school district. We also have current agreements with other sanctioned user groups within our city. They may get um, the field if they're considered a sanctioned user groups, maybe a certain amount of days uh, for free. Um, but overall, uh, the intention is that this facility will bring in revenue, and part of that revenue is the field, along with all the, a lot of other aspects of the facility. But um, yes, the intention is that a lot of these user groups and a lot of them that we've been talking to um, and discussing this with are committed to uh, having a agreement that would include a, a rental fee or a lease type option that they would utilize this field, yes. Roughly, do you know how much? I mean, ballpark figure? I mean, you, you stated it's going to bring in revenue, so you must have some idea of finances that should be coming in. Well, I, I it's should be. do from <laughs> an economic development standpoint. I mean, you, we yeah. talked about that last month. You know, new development that's going to come because of this development. But in terms right. of exactly what the field... Um, and Container Park are going to bring in from a revenue standpoint, I think, um, a little bit how long is a rope. I mean, it depends a little bit what we design. And when we go through this design process, which is what we're talking about tonight, um, I, I think we'll des design something that would yield a higher revenue. Okay. All right. Thanks, Mayor. Mm -hmm. All right. That's all the lights I have. The the motion before you is to recommend to the Common Council that we borrow this. And on this is where on page two. Page eight is the Finance Committee, which is to approve the request to borrow $2 million. So we're going to see this twice tonight. Um, this is the report of the Redevelopment Authority, item two. And there's a motion and a second. So if you'd use your board here, a yes would recommend the Common Council borrow the $2 million, a no would not. Passes on a vote of eight to three with one abstention. All right, Clerk, let's continue. We're now on to report of the Improvement and Service Committee, July 11th, 2018. All right, there's a motion by uh, Alderman Nicholson, second by Alderman Scannell to approve. Uh, we're on item L, the report of the Improvement and Service Committee for the meeting held on July 11th. Any items in this report you wish to handle separately? One. Item one. Hearing none others, all in favor of the remainder of that report, please signify by saying aye. Aye. And those opposed, nays. The ayes have it, and items uh, two through six have been approved. What are your wishes regarding item one? Is a motion to approve Alderman Scannell? Second. Seconded by Alderperson Dorf. Alderman Stoyer. Thank you, Your Honor. You know, we've gone back and forth over time with uh, overnight parking. We've brought that up a number of times, and it's, you know, I, you hear people on both sides of the issue here. I guess my concern is that if this would happen, that this one might open a can of worms for other people. Other people might want to do it as well. So I don't know if the Gary is here to speak on that behalf, or if somebody from INS, from that from the committee, could tell me, um, you know, what the request is. Is it just indefinite parking to the end of the year, or um, does anybody can fill me in on that? Otherwise, otherwise, I'm just saying that if this happens, if you allow this, then other many other folks will come forward and do the same thing. So it's kind of like either we, we have overnight parking or we don't. So right now we don't have it. We've revisited this a number of times, but uh, I would suggest that I would deny the request. You guys should have Gurnier too. Should I see if Gary's here first? Yeah, is, is, is the petitioner here? We're, just, we're on item L. It's a report of the Improvement Service Committee for the meeting held on July 11th. It's item one, um, Gary Bernowski. Okay, he's not here. Did, do you want to hear from Grenier or Andy? No, okay. Fine. Director Grenier, do you want to comment on this? The way I understood the communication as it occurred at council or at the committee last Wednesday, every property gets six occurrences. Right. right. Uh, Mr. Baranowski owns a property at 1239 Shadow Lane, which he rents out during the season, during the Packer season. This is a TRP property. Uh, so what he was looking to do was add on for the Packer games, taking a look at the home schedule throughout the course of 2018, including the preseason. There are 10 
home games. So I would understand this to be 10 total for a total of 16 during the calendar year. And in 2019, he would be obligated to come back before Improvement well, Service Committee okay. and demonstrate a need for anything above and beyond six. All right. Um, I guess the concern I have there is that, you know, we've talked to f folks on Shadow Lane, and I know that, Chris, that's in your district, and I've talked to some citizens there as well. And, you know, they deal with the Packer houses. I mean, I realize we have those there, but there are some of the neighbors that aren't very happy with the way that things are set up. So um, with it being said, I, I still feel comfortable that we should keep it the way it is. All right. Thank you, Alderman. Alderman Weary. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yep, this is, uh, this is in my district. And all the different times we've discussed overnight parking, it's been told to the public and to us that if we keep the overnight parking in place, it's okay because there's a mechanism to get additional ones, and that's to come before the committee. So that's really meant they're just doing, he's doing what we told him to do is to come before the committee. And you can only park in front of your own property. So it's not like you could litter the street with cars. You really could only park in front of your property. I think his house has maybe room for one, probably two. And of course, it's to uh, avoid having people drive somewhere where they shouldn't, especially after a game you want them to stay put. And so he, I think he's thinking about safety. And uh, I haven't heard any complaints of the people on that, in that, on that street. Uh, he's a well-respected person on that street. So I have no problem giving him the additional ones. I think it's a... Uh, it's a wise move. And he's just following exactly what we wanted since we didn't overturn the overnight parking. Thanks. But um, I want to be clear. Do you agree then it is 16? I mean, the way this is read, it looks. Well, I, in watching the committee, I was gone last week. I watched the committee, and uh, Director Pierlot, I believe, uh, stated it would be an additional six. Okay. Or it would be an additional amount through the end of the year, I believe. So it might be 10, but it expires at the end of the year, and you'd have to come back for anything in January. So yeah, thank you. it right, could be you. the additional 10, but that it expires at the end of the year. It's not a starting here and going one year. Thank you. Alderperson Dorf? I just want to say that I attended that committee meeting, and I felt that Improvement Services vetted it extremely well. Um, he had some good reasoning. He can only fit one car and two very small cars, as, as Alder Weary said, and I will fully support him getting this additional overnight parking allowance. They, the, the committee did a great job of vetting it, and I think we should go with what the committee recommended. Thank you. Alderperson Lefebvre? I won't support this. Um, to open up a Packer house, I mean, you should know what the ordinances are. And I don't think that he should have special privilege I have residents in my district. There's a lot of older homes. They have one-stall garages, short driveways. They got teenage kids that have jobs and want to drive. They they have no place to put their par cars overnight, and they're not allowed all kinds of. I mean, they have to have it all the time. Then they won't be they won't be approved to have a, on you know street parking, overnight parking, for a vehicle for the whole year. They're probably not going to get it. I I won't support this, and I also have a I'm going to have a request to improve in services. Also, um, there's a they the city went ahead with the planning for an eight unit apartment building, and they only had room for eight spots okay. to park, and they're having problems. So that's what All I'm right. going to yeah. Thank you. So this is a problem. Nope. I, I hear you. Thank you. All right. So we'll use the board on this one. Um, this is item one, and it's to approve the request um, for the additional on street overnight parking. the allowances are six or ten or sixteen I'm not sure we'll define that all right and that's approved on a vote of nine to three thank you okay Chris we're on to the report of the protection and welfare committee July 9th 2018 motion to approve. all right there's a motion by Alderman Nicholson second, second by Alderman Scannell to approve the report of the Protection and Welfare Committee, and that was for their meeting held on July 9th. Any items under this report, we have 23. Any items under this report you wish to handle separately? Hang on, you guys. Okay. Three and 14. 
Okay, hearing none others, all in favor of the. Yep. That is under first reading ordinance. Okay. I know you'd called on that. Yep, that's a little bit later. So um, what we have now is uh, the report of the protection and welfare and um, items 3, 14, and 17 have been pulled. So all those in favor of the remainder of that report, please signify by saying aye. Aye. And those opposed and ayes, uh, all items have been approved with the exception of 3, 14, and 17. What are your wishes regarding uh, item 3? So motion to approve by Alderman Scannell. Second. Seconded by Alderman Weary. Alderman Johnson, was that you or Alderman Stoyer? Huh? I'll go. Um, it, it's my understanding that this particular property is, I mean, it's, it's the parking lot owned by the city of Green Bay. We lease it um, uh, to Green Bay Sports Service. Um, I guess, m m what I would like to do is I'd like to see a little bit more discussion around, I mean, a payment in lieu of taxes, because this is a, a property that is owned by the city of Green Bay and we're, you know, they're allowed to operate there basically free of charge. Um, and we're, you know, extending the premise. We've, we've extended a number of things, I think, on this, this site over the last couple of years. Um, and so uh, I, I, I guess to that end, I, I'd, I don't know, Alder Story, if you want to speak on it, but otherwise I would say that I would move to refer this back to committee um, for discussion around the topic of payment in lieu of taxes. Second. All right, so I'm going to call it a referral, right? So yes. uh, there's, uh, so Andy, I can get you on here. There's a motion by Alderman Johnson, seconded by uh, Alderman Nicholson to refer this item back for committee to discuss the possibility of pilot or some kind of payment. Uh, so we're discussing the referral. I'm going to go to you, Alderman Stoyer. I agree with uh, Alder Johnson on this. Um, I think payment in lieu of taxes would be important to at least study. And I guess I wanted to talk to uh, Director Ellenbacher about, uh, you know, what are, what kind of, we're referring this back. So this is something that you would study, your, your department, or? I think we would, I'd end up working with the law department and figure if there's something we can do, either looking at the current lease or if there's, um, could have put a new document together and then put something in front of them um, so based I, it on some other pilot programs that we already right. have. So is it too late for this one possibly, but you know, maybe for future ones, or is this something that we can really study right now in your estimation? I don't know if you can tie the pilot program together with the change of the ordinance. Yeah. I would kind of have to defer that to the, um, the attorney. Vanessa? Would you want to weigh in on that? Yeah. So we are looking at two distinct but very related items. One is the granting of a license or extension of a license to um, an outdoor area, and the second is a pilot payment. The reason they're related is because generally when you have a licensed premise, the landlord has to say that it's okay for them to have a um, the, the extension on their property. Generally, though, you have it where it's the building that's that's owned by the landlord. In this case, the, the tailgate village is owned by the um, tenant or by the um, entity requesting. It's the outside area that is what we own, which is why um, asking for our consent to this would be appropriate at this time. So yes, we could do it at this point. Um, we can look into it. Um, they're not necessarily re uh, contingent one upon the other. But as the landlord, if we want to, you know, establish the terms through an addendum or something to the lease without having to read the full lease, um, since this is something new, that is definitely something we can do at this point um, before we sign off saying that, yes, it's appropriate for them to do this on our property. Well, I just think there's more study and need to be evolved. So if you refer this back, I would, I would agree with that. All right, thank you. That's all I got. All right. Alderman Johnson, did you want to speak again yeah, on this? I, I just want to expand upon my comments a little bit more. I, I'm, I don't object to the use of the space for the purpose that's proposed. I think for me, it's we've got a number of businesses in that area that pay property taxes, um, and, you know, which in turn, of course, is tied to their ability to generate revenue for their business. And here we have an example of, uh, of an organization that is basically tax-free that is selling a product and generating a profit from it. And so... Um, that's the reason I want to refer this back is, is for additional consideration on that point. All right, thank you. 
So if you'd use your board here, this is uh, item three uh, in the motion and the second is to refer this item back uh, for further analysis uh, of the license and a possible pilot. What's that? Oh, yes is to refer it. I'm sorry. She did. It's not lighting up. Mark, you're the only one. There you I go. All right, and that passes unanimously, so we will get back to the committee in a month or sooner. Thank you. Okay, clerk. Round two, oh, number 14. 14. What are your wishes regarding item 14? It's a motion to approve Alderman Scano, and that's Sec seconded by uh, uh, Alderperson Dorf. Um, this is denying the application for a liquor license at Quick Trip on Walnut. Alderman Johnson? Yeah, this is a. Uh, so, Quick Trip had come before uh, Protection and Welfare and actually had applied for a liquor license for, I think, all of their locations in Green Bay. And this was the only one uh, that we voted on to deny. And I think there were uh, a couple of different discussions that um, revolved around that point. Um, I think in, in, in my experience since, since uh, they migrated this facility to a 24-hour facility, we've had some challenges with the neighbors in that area. Um, and when we spoke about this at Protection and Welfare, uh, my concern was wanting to see some of those issues resolved before uh, we proceeded with granting them a liquor license. However, my desire was to see um, a hold on this rather than a flat out rejection um, because I, I do feel that um, if, if Quick Trip, you know, if it's kind of like, hey, these are some of the neighborhood concerns we have, can you work towards a resolution on some of these? And, and sort of the, the outcome at the end can be that you have this opportunity to basically, you know, earn your license, I guess. I mean, we've done this with other situations where uh, there's been problems. In fact, we said here a month ago um, about an extra dog permit. We said, hey, you know, if you can make amends with your neighbors and play nice with your neighbors, then we can come back and, and have that discussion. And so I think it's important to note that if we put in a provision here that says, um, you know, whether it's 60 days, 90 days, six months, um, just that we don't guarantee that they get it, but that, you know, that we're not going to flat out reject it. We're not going to make you go through that application process again, but we are going to come back at the end of that term and have a discussion about whether or not you've, you've, you know, interacted with your neighbors and, and adequately addressed their concerns um, to the point where we feel that you're not a nuisance to the neighborhood. Um, and, and so therefore we, we find it appropriate that, that you can partake in, in the selling of this product. So, um, I think you want to offer an amendment. I, I, I do get a lot there. So I think yep. the amendment is to hold the item for 60 days um, to adequately address concerns to yep. the and approval of you or P and W or I think P and W. So okay. so in in so that is the amendment I would like to offer. However, before before I do that, and we we do a vote on there. I, I would like to open the floor for interested parties. All right, so there's a motion by Alderman Johnson, now seconded by Alderman Stoyer, to uh, open the floor to hear from interested parties. All in favor of that motion, please signify by saying aye. Aye. And those opposed nays, ayes have it. Um, the City Council now is discussing item 14 under the report of the Improvement and Service Committee. And item 14 is to deny an application for a Class A liquor license to Quick Trip at 515 uh, Walnut. Um, anyone here who would like to speak to this? This is the Quick Trip on Walnut getting a license. Anyone want to comment on that? Anyone here want to speak to that? Yeah. Peggy Crab, 122 South Maple. Um, I was totally opposed um, against this, um, but after talking with Brian today, um, I think whatever you think would be the best to get better results for the neighborhood. I'm, I'll go along with whatever, so, because right. it directly influences me. So, thank you. Thank you. I just want to get your address, Heidi. Oh, she gave it? I'm sorry, I wasn't listening. All right, thank you. I know where you live. 122 South Maple. Okay. Anyone else want to comment on the quick trip? Walnut? Okay, I'll entertain a motion. All right, All right. there's a motion by Alderman Scannell, second by Alderman Stoyer. 
to return to regular order. All in favor of that motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 And those opposed nays, ayes have it. Alderman Johnson, you have the floor. Uh, so I would formally offer up an amendment. Um, I, I would move that rather than denying that we um, modify this to hold for 60 days um, subject to review by the P&W committee at the end of that 60 day period. Second. All right, so we have a motion uh, seconded by all the person Dorf on the floor now and that's to hold this item for 60 days uh, to adequately address some of the concerns and have P&W uh, do they have final authority on this or is that coming back here or how do you want to do that? I think it has to come back here. Okay, all right, yeah. fine. All right. Let me see who's next. Well, I know I got, would you relax? I got four of you that want to speak. And then I didn't, where did it pop up to vote? Give that guy a squeeze ball or something. Alderman Scannell. Yes. Thank you, Your Honor. Thought you were going to skip me. Uh, I oppose this. We, we discussed this at Protection and Welfare. And it's not just the specific issues around this store. It's issues concerning the whole core area strip there from Mather all the way to Mason. And until all those issues are addressed as well, uh, I oppose issuing liquor license to any of the prop any of the businesses along that area, which there are four. Uh, this has been ongoing at Protection and Welfare for some time. This is not the first time this establishment or the other ones have come forward for a liquor license and been denied. Uh, I think until um, the whole area is is ready to uh, uh, move forward with this. I don't want to grant one liquor license to one establishment without being able to do it to all of them. That's just not fair. And so... Uh, just for the point of order, you understand we're voting on the amendment? On the amendment. To hold and I'm for against, 60 days. Okay. To, and I'm against holding it. I want outright denial. Okay. Uh, and as we discussed at committee, uh, the reason, and the reasons why we did not go into a holding it was because of the, uh, these other issues, more than just the issues surrounding that particular store. Uh, so, I mean, if, they, if that particular store met the, the particular uh, requirements that uh, uh, some of the neighbors are concerned about, I would still be against issuing them a liquor license because of the greater issues uh, involving all the, that whole core, uh, that whole strip. Uh, so I, I think to deny this and then uh, all the issues altogether get resolved and then we can move forward. Uh, I don't think holding it 60 days is going to, uh, is a superficial timeline that just doesn't do anything. I think it's just best to deny it outright. Everything gets in order. They come back and apply. Uh, so I, I think that's the best way to go. I, I, don't, I think this is very problematic, just picking out this one store, giving them 60 days. It's not fair to the other stores uh, until we're all ready to move forward and they can all get their liquor licenses just like everybody else in the city. Uh, I think we're moving in that direction, uh, but we're just not there yet, and so I, I oppose uh, holding it for 60 days. Thank okay, you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Alderman Mark Stoyer. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I am part of PNW. Sadly, I wasn't there for that agenda item. I had to go to another meeting, but um, I've had a chance to talk to some of the neighbors as well on this, and I think, you know, it might be opening. Uh, another stream here but the fact is that there are a number of issues in the neighborhood and we're, we're going to have that in other areas of the city as well where you've got commercial lining up with very close to residential and I think it's not so much just the liquor license I mean we're just talking about that today but one of the issues is um, the trucks that are coming in at you know different times of the night and I think we need you know Alder Johnson is saying that 60 days My, I have no problem with looking at that there's other issues that are, are um, being dealt with in that neighborhood, and it's not just the liquor license. It's, you know, cars or trucks idling at for 45 minutes at a crack, you know, in a no parking area and keeping the neighborhood awake. So it might not be a problem to some people, but for those neighbors, it's a big problem. So I, I really think it's important that we, we study all of that. So I'm going to go along with Alder Johnson. All right, thank you. Other person, Lefebvre? Um, yes, um, I think I would deny the uh, motion. Um, I don't like this one because it is basically in a residential, even though there is a busy street you know, going past there. A lot of the other quick trips are in more commercial areas, so they don't impact the um, 
really the residents, and I just don't like the area that I think where it is. So I would deny both. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Galvin. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I was on protection and welfare uh, two years ago when these were first becoming an item. And uh, the alder at that time was concerned about the influence of hard liquor on the residents in that area and the problems it caused. And uh, I don't think you can look at uh, the supplier of uh, alcohol as being the source of where the problem necessarily comes from. They're already, all those uh, convenience stores down there are already selling beer and, and other alcohol related items. And I don't think it's just hard liquor that makes the problem uh, worse. I think it's how an establishment runs its business and how it conducts itself within its community. And I think that's what we have to look at, not the fact that they're selling hard liquor or not. If the problem is, as Alder Stoyer refers to, it's trucks in the late hours, then that's a different situation and it, and it has nothing to do with uh, liquor. Um, if it is the fact that there's uh, inebriated people entering in that store and being sold liquor, and they shouldn't be by, by ordinance, or if it's uh, chronic drunks that are uh, buying that liquor and they shouldn't be by ordinance, and then that's a different situation and that's, that falls on the store, whether it's beer or hard liquor. Um, so I would like to see if it's possible to throw this in there, um, Chief, if we could have at the end of 60 days, if this does pass, uh, if we could have a comparison in calls for service um, in the evening to uh, early morning hours uh, during that 60 day trial period and compare that to uh, you know, calls for service uh, prior to that. And also the officers self-initiated in observations. Uh, community police, if they want to conduct a survey of the neighbors and see what they have to say. Um, not all of them are aware of what's going on here. Not all of them have the time to attend these meetings and voice their opinion. But I think if the CPs could get out and get the feel of the, the community, um, I, I think that would go a long way. So I would be in favor of a 60-day uh, referral and, and see what goes on from there. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman. Alderperson Dorf on the thank, amendment. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I just would like clarification from Alder Scannell on what he was uh, mentioning. Would 60 days be enough time to look at the issues that you were talking about and clear them up. Is there a timeline for clearing up those issues? Because I would not want that out there indefinitely either. Maybe this could be a forced timeline to make a decision about those other those those other businesses. Mm. Okay, I'm talking about quick trip here, but okay, go ahead. Yeah. Um, this has been an ongoing issue, and, and one reason I denied, <coughs> voted to deny this, is I have been in discussion with neighborhood associations and, and uh, neighbors in the area, and this has been an ongoing uh, uh, process. So uh, we've already got a lot of that information, and, and what I'm hearing from the neighbors is uh, they don't want alcohol, uh, this, uh, these sales to go through just yet. They feel we're making progress but they want, they want to see us get a little bit better. And I think to put an arbitrary timeline on that is arbitrary. I think, you know, we, the process is that what has been is we're working on, uh, it's basically a homeless issue, loitering, littering, panning, and, and we've been working, we've been uh, making some big gains in, in handling homeless issues. I think we're moving in the right direction in that. There's a, a okay. agenda item coming forward on that that's gonna make a, make a, a big difference with that as well. And, I think it's talking to the neighbors and saying, are you ready for this now? Which is what I've been doing. We've been having those ongoing conversations with neighborhood associations. And when they're ready, then I think we can get the word to these businesses, okay, it's time to go forward. So that's why I'm a, an arbitrary timeline is just, I, I, I don't see how that's productive. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else? Oh, the person door, it's your floor. Oh, nothing else. All right. Yeah, hang on, I got two more of you. I got Alderman, three more. Alderman Jesse Burnett. Yes, uh, thank you, Mayor. I agree with Alderman Scannell. I happen to grow up in that general area, and I know the challenges the neighbors face there. Uh, and Quick Trip is a well, you know, some people have opposite opinions, but Quick Trip to me seems to be a well ran, respected company, and I know there are some frustration some of the neighbors have in that area 
with them changing their business model after they built. Now that is an issue that will be worked out at another time, but let's not forget that the shipyard project that the council just approved funding for to borrow part of this uh, project is to enhance the neighborhood around that area. And I think that uh, probably the last thing that neighborhood needs at this point is another establishment that sells alcohol. So as Alderman Scandal said, the quick trip can come forward at another time, but at this point I think we need to deny the license and let the dust settle and then as uh, neighborhood issues progress and uh, improve, then we can take another hit at this. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Galvin. Thank you, Your Honor. I would then ask uh, Alder Scannell, what are the metrics you're using? How do we measure success? I mean, quite frankly, I, I, alcohol is going to be an issue, I think, uh, a problem in our community for, for almost maybe forever. Who knows? But at least for the very, very uh, near future. And homelessness and panhandling and, and some of these other issues. And uh, this was an issue two and a half years ago. Don't, and don't we. Ask him. And we had, we had the police department working on that. Um, so, I, yeah, I mean, to be fair to these businesses and to the community, we have to have some, some way of measuring this. And I, um, I haven't seen anything yet. I mean, you say you've been working on it. I've heard nothing, seen nothing. I, and I guess I would ask, you know, for some proof of something being done. You say it's almost solved. Um, or are we just changing the opinion of the residents? It's world peace you want. I, I, I'll listen. Go ahead. No. It, Go ahead. It, 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 it's the neighborhood. It's their neighborhood businesses, and it's up to the neighbors to decide the value of that business and, and the issues around those businesses. And it's been an ongoing discussion. with The boots on the ground, that's my measurement. When the, when the residents say, and they're the ones who've been telling me, things are better. So I, I know things are getting better. Uh, they're the ones who are telling me they'd like to see a little more improvement and then they'd feel comfortable going forward. So my measure is talking to the neighbors, the neighborhood associations. They're the ones, it's their neighborhood, it's their business. It's, so it, I feel it's their choice. And so I'm just following their wishes. And, and uh, as far as what we're doing, we're, there's several things we're doing. The, the better policing, the businesses are doing better jobs of uh, uh, picking up the litter, uh, we're doing a better job with just homelessness in general, with housing and so on, so and meeting their needs, which makes a big difference for the area. So uh, there are several things going on that make things better, uh, but my metric for going forward with this is the neighbors, the neighborhood associations. When they're ready, then I'm ready, and and they're not there yet. Okay, we've got one neighbor that showed up tonight. Yep. I received one email from a neighbor that was against it. I don't know if that's the same person. This is what we're basing it on? No. I, 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 and, and, this, and, and at what point? Right. How many neighbors? 80%? Okay. I mean, right, right. I, motions to hold this for 60 days. Yeah. He, he doesn't agree with it. I, I don't know if you do, but we're going to vote in just one minute here. Alderman Johnson, your motion. Thank you, Mayor. Just two final points that I would make. And, and one, Alder Scandal, you brought it up yourself that the danger, if you will, of cherry picking. Uh, you know, we're going to let this person have it, but we're not going to let this person have it. I think to that, I would respond then, unless we have something in place that prohibits them from having a liquor license, I think we need to honestly consider applications that come forward. And right now, to my knowledge, there's not a moratorium that exists for these gas stations other than we have some concerns in the neighborhood, in which case then I would say, as a matter of fairness, um, if, if they're a law-abiding organization, they should be able to do that. And, and, and that's what we're talking about here, is giving them 60 days to basically show or demonstrate that they can be a good community partner. And, and I just want to reinforce this one point, is that by voting today, we're not giving them a liquor license. We're saying they have 60 days to demonstrate that they can be a good neighbor, and then they'll come before protection and welfare again, uh, you know, for your consideration to say, have you proven that you're a good neighbor? And that 60 days could also provide adequate time to properly poll or gauge the neighbors in that neighborhood and to determine if we're making the appropriate amount of progress that we need to be making on those issues. Alderman Stoyer. 
Thank you, Your Honor. I, I concur with Alder Johnson on that as well. I, I guess one of the things that we're going to have to look at in the 60-day period is, you know, the, the fact that it's a 24-hour establishment as well. Right. And I was at the original meeting two years ago when they had, when the owner kind of stalked out of the meeting because we were being, we were pressing him with questions. And I didn't really appreciate that at that time. And I really feel that, you know, if they want to be a good neighbor, you know, we need to look at all the angles, and that includes 24 hours. And I think that's where the issues come in with the neighborhood because these trucks that are often refrigerated will come into the alleys and they'll park and they'll leave their, they don't turn off their trucks, they let, let them keep running to keep the refrigeration units moving. So, you know, it's, that has to be included as well. So we have to look at this comprehensively. So I'm still in favor. All right. So use the board. The motion on the floor is to hold this item for 60 days to adequately address the concerns. Yes vote holds it for 60 days, a no vote doesn't. Alderman Stoyer. One more time. All right, net motion passes on a, hang on, vote of eight, to four, so we'll hold that for 60 days, be back at PW and then back in front of the council. Okay, we are now on to item 17, which is to grant the Class B wine only license to Badger State Brewing Company LLC at 990 Tony Canandeo Drive. What are your wishes regarding motion to approve Alderman Scannell, second Alderman Stoyer? Alderman Scannell, this is yours, okay. I would just like to refer this back. There's some issues that need to be worked out and needs to be referred back. Thank you. All right. So there's a, a motion by Alderman Scannell, uh, seconded by Alderman Nicholson, to refer this item back to resolve a few issues. Anybody wanna, let me just see if anybody wants to speak on referral. Okay, I don't see any lights. So all in favor of that motion, please signify by saying aye. Aye. And those opposed nays, ayes have it. That item has been referred back to PNW. We're on to the report of the Protection and Welfare Committee granting operator licenses. We have a motion by Alderman Scannell, second by Alderman uh, Kathy Lefebvre to approve the report of the Protection and Welfare Committee, uh, which is granting the operating licenses. This is uh, report N on number one. Are there any items under this report you want to handle separately? All right, seeing no lights, all in favor of that report, please signify by saying aye. aye. And those opposed nays, the ayes have it, and uh, report N has been approved. Report of the Planning Commission, July 9th, 2018, and July 12th, 2018. All right, we have a motion by Alderman Scannell, second by Alderperson Corpus Dax, to approve the report of the Plan Commission, meetings held on the 9th and the 12th. Any items in this report you wish to handle separately? Eight. Item eight. Okay, hearing none others, all in favor of the remainder of that report, please signify by saying aye. Aye. And those opposed nays, ayes have it. All items have been approved with the exception of item eight. What are your, what are your wishes regarding the, uh, what are your wishes regarding item eight? Motion to approve by Alderman Scannell? Second. Second by Alderperson Dorf. Alderman Scannell, who? Oh, oh. pulled that, Brian. All right, Alderman Johnson. I, I just need the record and, and, and to reflect that I pulled this simply because I need uh, an abstention on this uh, right. due to a conflict of interest with uh, Garrett Bader serving on my executive committee. Okay. All right, so with that, we have a motion and a second to approve item eight. Any discussion here? Alderman Burnett? Yes, uh, uh, Mayor, I apologize on the committee I was expecting. I was going to pull item five just to abstain uh, on that issue. All right. We can make that notation. Okay. I. I Thank you. I think you'd called earlier about that. Um, okay, so we have a, a motion and a second to approve uh, item eight. All in favor of that motion, please signify by saying aye. Aye. And those opposed nays, ayes have it, noting the abstention of Alderman Johnson on that and Alderman Burnett on, on item five. Okay, clerk. Report of the Finance Committee, July 10th, 2018. All right, there's a motion to approve by Alderperson Dax, seconded by Alderman Galvin. Uh, any, this is the report of the Finance Committee for the meeting on July 10th. Any items in this report you wish to handle separately? Item one. 
Anything else? Hearing none others, all in favor of the remainder of that report, please signify by saying aye. Aye. And those opposed, nay. Uh, what are your wishes regarding item one? Motion, Motion to approve by uh, oh. Alderperson Dorf, seconded by Alderman Galvin. Alderman Weary. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, same commentary as before. I just wanted this separated for a uh, display vote, please. All right. So we talked at the RDA about the $2 million for the shipyard. Um, this is the report of the finances to approve the request to borrow the $2 million for the shipyard. Um, if you please use the board here. And that passes on a, a vote of eight to four uh, to approve the borrowing. So we'll continue. Thank you. We're on to report yeah, of the park committee. Okay, three, one. All right, so there's a motion by Alderman Scannell, second by Alderman Nicholson to approve the report of the park committee for the meeting held on July 11th. Um, any items here, six items that you'd like to handle separately? Two. Item two. Okay, hearing none others, all in favor of the remainder of that report, please signify by saying aye. Aye. And those opposed nays, ayes have it. What are your wishes regarding item two? Motion to approve, Motion to approve by uh, Alderperson Dorf. Second. Second of Alderman Scannell. Alderperson Dorf. This is the concern that I have. I attended that meeting, and I know that this refers to waiving the fee for city inspections, which was $1,000. And at the meeting, Park's um, representatives had said that at, at, upon the advice of legal, they put the $1,000 fee in because of the new law that went into effect um, to ensure that there was no conflict with the fowls, the Friends of the Wildlife Sanctuary, being able to choose their, their own person to, to construct and that it didn't have to follow the city bidding. So my concern is by waiving that fee, I want to make sure that we're not putting any of that in jeopardy. So my question is to legal. Attorney Chavez. So the the issue we have is is in waiving it is whether or not it would create a, an unfairness at this point, because this is the first time it's ever happened. They've already done the fundraising. Um, this council can choose to waive it at this point, getting it on the record that it's because of the the um, nature of it that they weren't aware that this would be something that required at the beginning that it's appropriate. Um, for staff to do that just administratively, we would never recommend that because this should be one of the, the default provisions. But in this instance, um, if you guys make a, a determination that it would be patently unfair given the fact that this is a new um, agreement that's been put into place, there is no issue with waiving it. Okay, thank you. That's all I needed to know. All right. So with that, we have a motion and a second to approve item two. Uh, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. And those opposed, nay. No. All right, we'll use the board on this. Uh, this is item two under the report of the park committee to approve the amended design construction dedication agreement with the Friends by Wildlife Sanctuary for the construction of the 4K edition and waiving the fee for city inspectors listed in section 3.8. Alderman Galvin? My, my computer kicked me out. I'm trying to log back in so I can vote. Okay. Yeah, she can put it in. We can All right, go ahead. Bill, can you tell us how you want to vote? Yeah. Okay, so we'll put that in for you. All right, item two passes then on a vote of 10 to 2. You want to take a break? You want to keep going? All right, let's keep going. Report of the Personnel Committee, June 26, 2018, and July 10, 2018. Okay, 
Somebody else can speak up. Alder person, uh, this was, motion was made by uh, Alder person Kathy Lefebvre, seconded by uh, uh, Alderman Mark Stoyer, to approve the report of the personnel committee for June 26th and July 10th. Any items in this yes. report you wish to handle separately? Alder person Dorf, number six. Alderman Weary, number three. Alderman Burnett, item eight. Any others? Hearing none others, all in favor of the remainder of that report, please signify by saying aye. aye. And those opposed nays, the ayes have it. Uh, all items have been approved with the exception of three, six, and eight. We'll begin with item three. What are your wishes regarding item three? Motion to approve by Alderman Scannell, second by Alderman Johnson, Alderman Chris Weary. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, this is regarding our new Public Arts Commission and a, and a position that assists greatly with the commission. It's a commendable effort to try and add more public art. Uh, can't imagine too many people against that. My concern would be the proposed change, which is taking a position that's a half-time, limited-term public arts coordinator that makes $20 an hour and changing it into a three-fourths position, a permanent part-time employee, who now makes twenty one twenty four to twenty four ninety nine? So basically, it'll be twenty five dollars at some point. And with their full benefits package, you're looking at forty six thousand dollars a year. And it'll be in our books. It'll be on the payroll. It'll be part of our, our structure. And I know that you know the goal is to have it funded privately. But right now, part of it would be funded with federal money, uh, federal block grant money. And and I can think of a lot of other things that that money can be used for than than to turn this into a pretty nice job. I mean, we're going to be paying basically an art an art critic to be part of our, our staff, probably have an office here, and get $46,000 in benefits to, to tell us what art is nice and what isn't. And, and I think we can use that money elsewhere. I think the fundraising should be done first, bring forward your funds, and then, then we'll look at it. But I just have a bad feeling. Once it's in our, our table of, of contents or, <laughs> you know, Organization. Table of organization, table of cons, table, table of uh, organization, it could slide the other way and be fully funded by the city. And I just can't see most people saying, yeah, you know, that's a pretty worthwhile spot. We can't, we don't want to pay an assistant for the council. You know, <laughs> don't want that. We don't want maybe more help at the police, police department or more planning inspection, ta you know, staff. But we need to have somebody to tell us what art we need. I, I just don't think that's appropriate. So... Uh, I'm going to move to, uh, I, I'm just going to vote no on this, and I would advise others to vote no as well. Uh, if they want to come back later after they fundraised and, and funded all themselves, great. But I don't think we should be using our federal money for this. Thanks. Thank you. Alderman Johnson, item three. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I think to classify this position as an art critic is a gross mischaracterization of really what the position is. And, and I mean, when you look at communities that are very successful with attracting talent and create spaces where people want to be, uh, public art is a very critical component of that. And so, um, and I think that's really what this role is about. And it's adding a quality of life amenity to our community. Some people value bridge lights, many don't. <laughs> some people value roads, some people uh, value art. And I think this to me is uh, a step in the right direction for the city of Green Bay. Um, I, I think it, the way that I understand it right now, it's being funded through the sales tax money. Um, to your point, CDG, uh, CDBG funds would, uh, would do that afterwards. I have a proposal on the table uh, that staff is looking into that was approved earlier to refer to staff um, about a percent for the arts program that could potentially fund this program as well. So um, un unless I'm mistaken, I mean, this is a position that we could pull from the payroll at any time in the future. And so I do support this position, moving to three quarters time, continuing to use the funds that are made available uh, or that were laid aside for this particular position. And if sometime down the road we don't have a permanent way to fund this position, I would expect the council to have the courage to say our priorities have shifted and, and we're not going to keep that as part of our, our permanent staff. Great. Thank you. Do you want to speak again on this, Alderman Weary? Yeah. Alderman Weary. Thank you. Uh, I, I know that sounds good in theory, that in the future you could just cut the position out, but haven't been on council long enough. You, you work with people, you get to know them. And then when it's not just doesn't come just a position, it becomes a person. And then it becomes much, 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 much more difficult to cut that person out. It really does. 
believe me, and, and it'll sway just enough votes that you, you won't cut it out. So I think you nip it in the bud now. Fundraise for those dollars. How many of you want to go and tell people that we have a $25 an hour job in the books, and we, but we couldn't fund some of these other positions? Uh, but, but we had to get an, an art expert, if you don't like critic. We had to get an art expert. Gosh, we had to get an art expert in here. Oh, man, we were been dying for this for, for years. So I, it's up to you, but I, I just think we, we nip it in the bud now. Thanks. Thank you. All right, use the board on this. This is... I guess that my computer working. Alderman <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Um, when we're talking about that position, we are talking uh, a big part of it is fundraising. So you're asking the, uh, the, to get the chicken before the egg or the egg before the chicken, whichever way you want to look at it. Uh, we need that position uh, <clears throat> to facilitate and, and bring forth those dollars. That's the big part of that position, a uh, big uh, component of that position. So um, to just get the fundraising first, we need the person there to do it. Uh, so uh, we ran into a problem where this position was going to be, we're going to end up losing this person. And we're going to end up with, a, like we did with many of our staff in the past, losing staff because we weren't paying them enough. We didn't have the funds to pay them enough. And they were being poached. Uh, so this is a position that, that we can, as Alder Johnson has said, when the time comes and we've got the funds to take it in, in different directions. But right now, uh, this is grant funds. I think it's a good source of the funds. I think uh, the public arts uh, plays an important role in promoting development. It brings dollars to the community. So uh, she's far from just an arch critic, uh, this position. It's uh, very important to the committee that this job be filled. Thank you. All right, now, use the board on this. A yes vote approves the request All right. Just one final point that I want to make, and, and just to urge you to reconsider this in a different light. We're not asking for new funding. We're not asking, I mean, basically, the funding that's allocated for this position, this is what it's allocated for. It's not allocated for police. It's not allocated for public works. It's already restricted in terms of how it can be spent. All I think the request is doing is saying we'd like to spend a little bit more quickly up front than what we're authorized to do so that we can get the result that we're looking for in the back end. Like I said, um, use the board. Yes vote. Approves the request. No vote doesn't. All right, and that passes on a vote of eight to four. All right, clerk. We're on to number six. What are your wishes regarding item six? Motion to approve by Alderperson Dorf, seconded by Alderman Stoyer. Alderperson Dorf. Thank you, Your Honor. So I wanted to um, clarify th this motion a bit. I went into the, the personnel committee um, using the study that was produced in June of 2017 and that study covered the looking at mayor positions and city administrator positions from across the state of Wisconsin, looking at us as being the eighth um, highest mayor salary, but the third largest city. Um, and th so, th so you have the information in front of you. It was passed out at the beginning of the meeting. So in the end, what I chose to do to start things off because I, I know we're going to discuss this I know that this probably won't end up the way it is but in order to clarify what what I finally ended up doing it was to to increase the salary to $94,863 which is what the salary would have been had that salary not been frozen the last eight years if that position had gotten the 2% that the other city positions had gotten, it would have been 94863 And then the part that I don't believe is clear the way this is written is I 
wanted it to annually increase based on any general increases provided to the general municipal employees. Um, I can't legally state it that way. I need to state a percentage, so I'm going to go with the 2%. So increasing it, the $3,082.75 a year over the four years, up to the 94863 but adding in the 2% each year the final total then after 4 years would be $102,298.55 and so that's how I would you know would start the motion because this the motion as written is not correct and I I also believe that we'll have a lot of discussion and it may change in the end but I think we should start somewhere so you want to amend this the request by the person to amend the increase over the next four years to 102 what? What? 102, 298, 298.55, and that includes a 2% per year increase. Okay, thanks. Okay. I guess somebody wants to speak on this. You can open the floor. Motion open the floor. Second. All right, so we've got a motion by Alderman Stoyer, second by Alderman Galvin to open the floor to hear from interested parties. All in favor of that motion, please signify by saying aye. aye. And those opposed, nay. Yeah, go, go ahead. You know, I are you Patrick Doherty? Yeah, we did. We just voted on it. Mr. Scandal, I want to congratulate you because that's the first time, and I haven't been to a lot of meetings, county or city, the first time that I heard anybody say that you listen to the people in your district. First time. And, and uh, Barb Dorf, <coughs> you, maybe you forgot about Act 10. Maybe you forgot about that. Those guys in Madison, what they did to the city workers, to the public workers. And you want to sit and you want to give a raise to an, to an administrator. I know, I, I believe you were in administration in the school district. And I know how it works there. Because I worked there 22 years, ran for the school board as a joke and won. It was a big joke. So I think before you talk about giving, whether it's a mayor or any administrator a raise, you better start thinking about the guy, the, the, the people that got taken over by those people in Madison and start giving them a raise and start giving their benefits back. Because I don't know if you know it or not, but supposedly the lady in food service two years ago got 15 cents an hour. That's a hell of a lot less than what you're proposing. So I think you better take another look at it. Thank, Thank you. you. Anyone else? Well, thanks, Randy. Anybody else want to speak to this? Anybody else? All right. I'll entertain a motion to return to regular order. So by Alderman Nicholson, second by Alderman Stoyer. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. And those opposed nays, ayes have it. You done? Um, Alder Person Lefebvre, I'll go to you. Hang on. Hang on. Alder Person Lefebvre. Yes, I'm on the committee, and the proposal was for a lot higher increase each year. And I said it was like a 13% increase. And I brought up the exact thing that this gentleman came up that the regular employees didn't get a 13% ever raise. Their, their raises are always a lot less. So I didn't feel it was fair to give a mayor, I don't care anybody, a 13% increase in their salary. So we brought it down to this level and with a cost of living so that it keeps up with what's going on, which all the employees get a cost of living and this is a small raise. So then I, I, I proved it. I thought that was fair. And um, yes, I do feel for the employees that were with Act 10. It wasn't right, I don't believe, but it's passed and we have to work with it. So, But I do feel that this was appropriate, bringing yeah, it down. Thank you. Alderman Chris Weary. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Could I verify the current motion on the floor? That the current amendment. motion is to approve the request by the Dorf as amended to increase the mayor's salary over the next four years to 102 295855 which includes a cost of living increase over the four years. Thank you. So it was amended from committee, which committee recommended, I think, 94863 So well, I thought no, the, it's, it's kind of the same. It's exactly the same. I'm just giving you the, the correct number. She, 
put the two percent your uh, uh all the personal pay my uh, look uh, i don't really have a dog in this fight i think it was ninety four thousand plus two percent a year cost of living and all the person dorf put the two percent in to give you the total amount so and just motion's silent. I think there was maybe just some miscommunication. So 94 I, I plus 2% or 102 all in. I mean, it's the same number. Okay. And I, I can explain. I can explain the reason that that is like that. Um, under state statute and our ordinances, the exact amount has to be established by ordinance beforehand. So we can't have a discretionary adjustment. It has to be set. All right. Now, that's all my comments for right now. All right. Thank you. Alderman Nicholson. Thank you, Mayor. Question, with this raise, the benefits uh, go up also? Retirement? Well, I, I think the benefits, Joe, you want to comment on that? I mean, it's I just same percent. Retirement goes up. The percentage for benefits for retirement is set by the state, so it'll just go up based upon the salary going up. So it just will coincide with the salary. So, so the retirement would also go up also? Yes, it goes up because the salary goes up because the percentage is set by the state. Okay, so what is the final number then? Because that's got to be part of it. It's called, isn't that a benefit package? Benefits can actually be amended at any time. It's the salary that has to be established. Okay, and then how does that affect the retirement? What do you mean? Well, I just asked, does his retirement go up? And according to Joe, he stated yes. Correct? So if you're asking so how what the much, total benefits how, package included is? Yeah, how much will it be? Because you said we have to have a final number. Wouldn't that be part of it? You have to have a final number for the salary component only. Okay. The benefits can be adjusted um, at any time, which is why when we were discussing whether or not to, to change the benefits um, of the council last year, we were able to do that because elected officials' benefits are considered separate from their salary. But the retirement will go up. Can the council s say, no, the retirement stays the same where it is, or will it go up with the? I'll let the HR director. Okay, thank you. Go ahead, Joe. Well, Person Nicholson, I'm not sure if I heard the whole question, but uh, the state does pay out the retirement benefits, so that would not be coming out of the city funds. But doesn't the city match that? The employee matches that. It's paid in. The employee, but then what's the match? Is that from the state? The city yeah. matches. The city matches it. Yeah, that's correct. So, the city does match it. Okay. So actually, it's just more than 2% then because whoever becomes mayor um, will also have an increase in retirement. So it's more than 2%. That's how I look at it. I mean, okay. did anybody see it different? And I think it was Mr. Doherty uh, stated that. Some food service person received 15 cent raise. Well, this is a little more than 15 cents. This is thousands of dollars. You know, I don't know, when you really look at it, we can't even take care of our roads and now we're giving out pay raises and we're adding to the table of organization. I don't know, where are our priorities? I guess my priorities is, is infrastructure taking care of the employees we have right now, and then whatever we have left over, we can take care of the fluff later. But boy, I tell you, and I've been being stopped in the last four weeks since last month saying, what is going on with the city council? And I said, well, you're gonna have to call them. Call your alderman. I mean, you're preaching to the choir here. I just can't believe it. Pay raises, we're adding positions, Bonding $2 million for projects that really nobody, nobody has any interest in, no prospects, and we're left on the hook, like Mr. Worry stated. Boy, but we can't take care of our roads. But we're going to tax the people for the roads. Okay, what, what's our property taxes for? What is that supposed to take care of? Well, benefits, salary, everything but infrastructure? I just don't get it. Please, someone straighten me out. Because this is just doesn't add up. Now, is this fair to the employees? They receive 2%. Okay, someone gets 2%, 15 cents an hour. Cost of living? 
someone's receiving thousands of dollars, I think that's a little more than cost of living. I mean, if we really look at it, if you want to give a pay raise, it should be a half a percent, maybe. But doesn't the person who is in the position or becomes the next mayor, isn't that enough to live on? Boy, you look at the people on the northeast side of town where I came from, of the, of the east side, that's more than enough. Maybe on the far west side also. Boy, I don't know. Where's our priorities? That's what I like to ask the council. Thank you. Thank you. Logan Scam. Thank you, Your Honor. Well, I, I'd like to address some of that. I mean, that was a real hodgepodge stew that was thrown in there. Uh, our roads are a separate budgetary item. You just don't throw everything all together. Uh, our, you can't take money budgeted for salaries and say, oh, we're ignoring our roads. Our roads have a separate funding mechanism, and that has to be addressed as a separate funding mechanism. To say we're pay taking money to put it to development and not taking care of our roads is comparing apples and oranges. These are separate funds, separate money, separate things we need to do. We need to do all these things as a government. That's what government is. We do all these things. You can't just say, well, we, we're giving this some raise and now our roads are going to hell. Well, no. The roads have a separate funding issue, a separate, uh, a whole set of separate, separate circumstances that I'm not going to bother going into because that's off topic. We've had that discussion with our roads when we discussed the wheel tax. I'm sorry you couldn't keep up with that. Uh, as far as uh, raises for the mayor, it's been frozen for 10 years. This has been a concern of mine from the moment I was uh, elected. I believe as elected officials, there's a lot of bunk out there that we, we take a lot of There's an opinion out there that we're all corrupt, that we're all bums, that we're all, uh, all in it for power or money. And I, I refute that strongly. A lot of us believe in public service. And we, we should be paid for that. The, the mayor's office is, a, is an important part. It's an executive. He's like the CEO of the city. It's an important position. It's a position that deserves a decent wage. This is not out of line. If you look at what other mayors are making in similar situations, we are the third largest city in the state. It's kind of embarrassing that we'd pay someone so poorly. This is a matter of what's fair and what's practical for a, uh, 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 well, I just think that we need to stand up for ourselves a little bit as politicians. We deserve a better rap. We work hard. And we deserve to make a decent wage. And when you look at the, the job that the mayor's office has, what this mayor has to do, anybody in this position, and you compare it to other mayors around the city, around the state, uh, this is very reasonable and something we should do if we're going to be, we want responsible governance. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Bernard. Yes, uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, I think it's important to uh, make the distinction that this would be in effect for the next mayor, that you, uh, the current mayor, would not be, unless you run for re-election, which I know you're undecided on currently, but you would not be subject to this pay increase. That's correct, right? Mm -hmm. I think everyone has that understanding. So that being said, I don't think that the current salary that where it is now $82,000 a year is discouraging anyone from stepping forward and putting their hat in the ring. Currently, we have five candidates, you know, unofficial or official, including someone on this very council who currently is a heartbeat away from the mayor. No offense to Mr. <laughs> mayor, who knows the stress of the job and whatnot. But so it's not discouraging anyone. And we kind of have a, a rarity in that we have to take a step back and understand that the current person in the position is now nearing his 16th year in office. That's not common. That's not common for Green Bay. There's only been one other mayor who's gotten anywhere near that. So what I'm getting at is that the person, the people who are running for office are basically 
promising a four-year term because you never know what happens after the four years. You know, you lose election, lose interest, move away, who knows what. So of all the candidates who have stepped forward, they're basically saying for the next four years of my life, I'm willing to dedicate service to this city and get compensation in the amount of $82,000 a year with great benefits, with you know, a lot of ability to affect positive change in the community. And it's a love of community service. It's a love of community. Mr. Mayor, whether people love you or hate you, and I know you have a bunch of both candidate, both people in both camps on that side, I don't think anyone can dispute your amount of hours that you put in service to the city. I mean, I can only imagine the number of hours that you work. And so when you factor in all of the hours you work and your salary, you have many motivations, I'm sure, but one of the biggest, and I've gotten to know you, is your love of the city. And I would say that hopefully the voters get it right and elect a, a mayor this coming election that has a love of the city. If you were to take, for example, if we, we factored in $112,000 a year, and assuming, and Mr. Mayor, I'm sure you work more than 60 hours a week, many weeks, uh, probably a minimum of 60 hours, but if you were to factor 60 hours a week over full 52 weeks a year, that's 3,100 hours roughly. It amounts to $32 an hour. I mean, that's not a lot to pay an executive. If you were to put in 40 hours a week, that amounts to $49 an hour. All right, so I understand, I fully acknowledge that department heads make more, but also they're not elected. Um, they, uh, serve under the discretion and hiring of the, of the mayor and many of those positions do require some sort of advanced degree you know public works to requires education and training in that field police science for the police chief and firefighter and hr director city attorney you name it there are always going to be people in this city making more than the executive and and that, that is the case for many organizations as well. I mean, unless you go into higher echelons of corporate business structure, executives oftentimes make less than their higher, higher paid employees just because it's different. The qualifications for being elected mayor is getting a majority of the votes from the voters. It could be a high school dropout, it could be a high school graduate, it could be someone with an associate degree or an advanced degree, who knows? I hope we get a good, uh, pool of candidates. I hope we don't limit ourselves to just five. I hope more people step forward. And I, I have a feeling that the people who step forward are going to do it because they want to serve the public. They believe in that. And they're going to commit to a four-year term and maybe four years after that uh, and, and go from there. So I'm against the pay, pay increase, not because I don't value the mayor and the work that he's done and his dedication to the city, but it's, it's separate from the mayor. It's for the person coming into the position, whether whoever he or she is. So with that, I will uh, vote against the the motion. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Alderman Stoyer. Thank you, Your Honor. Some very good points, Alder Burnett. Um, I guess the question I had is when when was this frozen? When was the exact date that the wages were frozen? Was that eight years ago? Six years? I, I don't know. It's been a little while. So I guess I just I wanted to know why that happened. You know, if, if anybody is out there that can explain the reason why that happened. You know, I and I asked if I needed to recuse myself from this discussion, law said I could speak. So I'm just I'm just asking that on that point. Um, why that was I mean granted it is public service and granted you are the CEO of the city I mean it's you look at baseball teams the managers don't make as much as the ball players. you know it's just the way it is and that's understood I think going into that position but I you know I guess I had a, a difficult time understanding why things were frozen to begin with you know if it was just a normal job you would just move along and then all of a sudden it's frozen. Now it's piled up over eight, ten years, and now we're dealing with it. So I, you know, it's just I'm looking at it just as part of the smell test. Does it pass the smell test? And you know, I think what Alder Dorf brought forward, you know, at least you know was fair in the sense that let's let's bring it back. You know, let's not do the 13 percent, but just bring it back to a point where it's it seems fair. So I'm fine with that. Thank you. Thank you. 
Mr. Mayor. Alderman Johnson. I, I just have a question. I think um, legal could probably answer this, and it's more of a just clarification. If we do not, is Vanessa there? Yes. Sorry, you're hiding. Uh, <laughs> I'm just short. <laughs> if, if this is basically our only opportunity to provide a pay increase until another four years have lapsed, is that correct? There is a limited period of time that this can be done, yes. It has to be done before, I believe, all the candidates' declaration of uh, candidacies are, are due. Okay, so it would apply to the full term, and we can't just midterm decide correct. that we're going to alter that agreement? That is correct. Okay, and I only bring that up just uh, listening to Alder Burnett's comments, uh, which I, I greatly appreciate. Um, the thing I just want to make sure that we don't fall into is a trap of four years from now, we're saying, you know, the same thing. And so, it, I mean, the pay scale for this position has been frozen, to my knowledge, for, for eight years or two terms. Um, if we don't take action, it could be a third term. And I just, I wanted to provide some clarity around that point. Thank you. Alderman Galvin. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, you look at the studies. Uh, what do other mayors make? Their biggest city, we're number eight for pay. I mean, um, you look at what city managers make. Now, these are guys that go to school, get a degree, get education, get the training to manage a city the same way a mayor does. But are they there for public service? No, and they make far more, far more. And I think, Jesse, you said 112,000. I think it's 102,000. So it's 102. And if you look at any city manager yet in the state of Wisconsin, they're making far more than that. So even if the next mayor, whoever it may be, he or, he or she may be, um, 102,000 still far, falls far below what a person who's doing this as, as a permanent job is going to be making. Um, you look at department heads. Yeah, they're making more. They have advanced degrees, and this is what they, they, they are working for. That's why they got those advanced degrees. But there's many employees that are making more, not just department heads, but many employees that are making more than the mayor is currently. And I remember when I was on the job, I was always told, I, you know, you'd, every once in a while you'd run and say, hey, you're a public servant. You should be doing this because you want to serve. And I, and I did. I love my job. But I'm not going to lie. It was nice getting paid to do it. And I, I believe that we got a darn good wage um, and benefits at the time. But we're talking again about the mayor. We're talking, I've heard, half percent increase in that. I, I think we've done a disservice to the position. Let's not look at the person. I think we've done a disservice to the position not to grant even a cost of living increase over the last eight years when all other city employees have gotten at least a cost of living increase. And we haven't even done that for the mayor. And I'm, I'm talking about the position, not the person. Next guy comes in here, he may only work 20 hours a week, and there's not much we can do about it unless we do a recall or we vote him out in four years. But you, we, can, we have seen what some of the mayors have done in the past, and they put a lot of their life and blood into this thing. And, and I think that we have to recognize that that's the kind of person we want, love them or hate them, that they're going to put their life and blood into this job. And I think that position needs some more compensation than what we're currently doing now. And that's, uh, I, I just want you to think about that going forward. Thank you. I thank you. All right. The motion on the floor. Now you do. Now you do. You didn't have it left. Trust Alderman me, Weary. I did. You have a I'm not just saying that for Alderman Zimmer. Because huh? his light was always lit. So. Now, I, I guess I misunderstood the goal amount because I understood it to be 94000 and I think some of the media outlets reported that as well. Because I know when I was asked about it by a, a local station, that's the number they used. So I think there was a lot of confusion about that. Um, that the goal was 94000 not 102000 uh, That does change things for me dramatically because the 102000 is is a $5,000 a year raise, 5%, over 5% a year for four years. And uh, back eight, nine years ago when we were discussing the, the original freeze, it's because we had some pretty, you remember, Mr. Mayor, we had some pretty tight budgets. You know, a lot of the employees. Oh, no, don't, don't, <laughs> you were there, don't tell me. I was at the meeting. I remember that, sitting upstairs, 604, Pat Buckley, you don't, that wasn't it. So. All right, well, thanks for that unwanted commentary. Yeah. Well, you just put words in my mouth. No, I, I said you remembered that. the tough budgets, and right. you did. Okay, we don't need to debate. 
I'm saying there were tough budgets and employees had no pay raises, none. That's part of the original reason the mayor's salary was also frozen. Now, did the employees, did the street workers and forestry guys, do they get to play catch up with 5% a year? No. You laugh them right out of the room if they ask for that. So, like Alderman Burnett pointed out, you know, we have five candidates running for mayor, probably more, right now, for a position that pays $82,000 a year. I'm thinking they're doing it because they love the city. They're not doing it for the money. Are we trying to say, well, we, we also want people who want to do a little bit for the money and they kind of like the city. You know, I understand raising it, that's fine. But 5% a year, $5,000 a year, that's, that's a bit extreme. You know, elected positions are about service, not salary. Is this a bragging rights thing? We're the third largest city, so damn it, we need to have the third largest salary. Come on. So, uh, you know, I guess if I didn't support the, the $46,000 total compensation for an art, an art expert, I, I certainly can't support a $20,000 raise for the mayor at 5% a year. So I'm opposed. If we bring it down to what I thought it was of 94, I'm all for that, but not this. Too much. Too much too quick. All the personal faith. I'm getting a little confused at our committee. We approved 94,863. It was 3,000 a year increase, not the 5,000. Kathy, Kathy, no, we approved uh, roughly 3,000 some dollars plus cost of living every year, whatever the cost of living was. But because of ordinance and state law, we can't wait to see if it's a 1%, half percent, or a 5% cost of living increase. So that's um, what. Uh, Barb did some math and, and came up with that two percent every year for, for, but that's what we voted on. Okay, so now I have a question on that. I don't, yeah, that wasn't really present. I mean, the whole thing presented that much. So now I have a question on that. Okay, all right. I don't think I don't know if I'm going to prove it now. I don't know. Thank you. Okay, um, Alderman Scannell. I just want uh, some clarification. Uh, the five percent. What we're doing here is we're doing two percent from the eighty, and then adding another two percent from every year pay increase after that. Correct. So it wouldn't be five percent once we get to the hundred. It would be the regular two percent after that. If I understand that correctly. Right. And we figured out what the cost of living had been over that period of time. And came up with if you if you've been getting cost of living up until this year, you would have been at ninety four thousand. Then going forward for the next four years, we added on another two percent, anticipating a two percent cost of living for each of those four, four years. years. And that gets you to one hundred percent. And then are we frozen then after that, or is it two percent after that? No, that's done. It's done. Oh, okay. That that's the clarity I, I needed. Okay, thank you. That's thank you. Alderperson Dorf. Hi, I just want to try to clarify one more time for Alder Weary and Alder Lefave. Um, the the salary was frozen. So, if it were to have kept up, then immediately the very first year it would be at ninety four thousand. But that's not what we're even asking for. If the mayor's salary would be at the 2%, would have continually kept up with what everyone else got as a pay increase. Nobody had a 0% pay increase during that period, your period of time. I had the chart. Everyone got a 2%. But no, we're not saying let's catch them all up right away. We're saying over four years, catch up to where he would have been, and then each year, we're going to give the 2% that we think is going to be the cost of living that other people will get. So uh, we're really actually starting low on that first year, the second year, the third year. It's not till you get to the f really the fourth year that, that we're getting up to that 94000 although by the end of it, with you, when you're adding in that extra 2%, that's what makes it more. 
but but the initial intent was just to bring it up to from where it was frozen to where it would have been had it not been frozen. That was the initial intent, but I felt it only right to say, hey, wait a minute, but we did say we're gonna give the cost of living increase. I found out it can't just, we can't just wait for that. We have to put some kind of a cost on it. I chose 2% because the last eight years, that's exactly what the employees got, was 2% a year, so I was projecting 2% for the next four years. So. It's not kind of a bait and switch or, or that I'm changing anything. It's really exactly what I said it was at the personnel committee meeting. Thank you. Alderman Bernard? One last comment. Now, when I was on the county board, I typically would vote against the salary increases for four year uh, termed officials, you know, county clerk, register of deeds. Uh, sheriff, county executive, you name it. And my reasoning then is similar to my reasoning now. When a person puts their name on the ballot uh, for election to four-year offices, think of it as sort of a um, compensation package. For the next four years, uh, the position of mayor in the city of Green Bay, if we keep 82000 a year, is going to be making $328,000. So guaranteed, unless they're complete screw up and get recalled, they're guaranteed a four-year term at $328,000 a year. It's important to put it in that perspective. Department heads, four years to it. I'm talking nonsense. So uh, my numbers, I'm good with numbers to it. Yeah, it was just when the, the cameras are on, I maybe switched the numbers around. So $82,000 a year over four years is a payment compensation of $328,000 a year. You know, it's guaranteed money, like I said, unless they really goof things up. So so that's a good uh, a salary for this community. Other thing to remember, department heads, anyone that is an at-will employee, uh, if they don't perform, they get let go. They get fired under the discretion of the mayor, whoever happens to be the, the department head. So uh, there is security in the position of mayor. There's no security in re-election, but there's security in that they carry out the duties of their, their office. So I want to be consistent um, with that. I think that keeping the salary at $82,000 a year, when put in perspective that it's $328,000 for a four-year term, uh, makes it completely reasonable that we could find qualified candidates to serve and represent the city. Thank you. Alder Bernard, can I just ask you a question? And then at what point okay. Do we, do we increase the yeah. salary? I mean, what, what's the... I, I agree. I mean, every alderman, every yeah. alderman has got to make that right. choice. Okay. My, my choice is 82,000. Right. All right. We understand that. All right. You're done? You're done? You ready? Ready. So, I just want I want to clear this as I... The way I understand the motion on the floor is to approve the request by Alderman Dorf, Alderperson Dorf, as amended to increase the mayor's salary over the next four years to $102,298.55, which includes the cost of living increase. All right, you vote on this. Tell us. No. Yeah. Done. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. All right. Now this is a start. All right. That passes on a vote of eight to four. All right, clerk. We're on to number eight. And what are your wishes regarding item eight? Approved. The motion approved by Alderman Scannell. Second by Alderman Stevenson. Alderman Burnett. Thank you, uh, Mayor. I'm not talking numbers, so hopefully I can get this right. Uh, I just want to make sure that I, I agree with this. I agree with uh, the wishes of the committee, but I listened to the 
conversation at the committee level, and I don't want it to be perceived that it was a that Alderman Weary was trying to get some sort of benefit. It was just uh, discussed at the INS committee a few times, and it was suggested or recommended by the city attorney. This should go to the personnel committee, which it did. Uh, but it's not that we were adding anything to the benefit package, at least that wasn't Alderman Weary's intent. His intent was really to get a duplicate parking pass for alders that have two separate cars. So obviously the, the committee spoke, and I'm in favor of what the committee said. I just don't, don't want it to be perceived that it was okay. getting over and above what we normally get. It was just a duplicate pass. All right, thank you. Thank you. All right, so there's a motion and a second to approve item 8. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. And those opposed, nay. I just have it that passes. Okay. We approved the request by Alderperson Dorf. All five. To refer to staff to request by Alderman Weir to explore the options to restore the system. Um, Item five was to refer to staff the request by Alderman Weary to explore options and restore an assistant to the city council position. Yeah, that was approved. All right. Okay. We're on to the report of the Public Arts Commission, June 27th, 2018. All right, there's a motion to approve by Alderman Scannell, second by Alderman Galvin, to approve the report of the Public Arts Commission. That was for the meeting held on June 27th. Any items in this report you wish to handle separately? Hearing none, all in favor of that report, please signify by saying aye. Aye. And those opposed nays, ayes have it, and report S has been approved. Report of the Traffic, Bicycle, and Pedestrian Commission, June 18, 2018. All right, there's a motion by Alderman Scannell, now seconded by Alderman Stoyer, to approve the report of the Traffic, Bicycle, and Pedestrian Commission meeting held uh, on June 18th. Any items in this report you wish to handle separately? Okay. Item 6. Okay, hearing none others, all in favor of the remainder of that report, please signify by saying aye. Aye. And those opposed, nays, the ayes have it. All items have been approved with the exception of item six. What are your wishes regarding item six? The motion to approve by Alderman Scannell, second by Alderman Stoyer. All the person corpus to ask, that was you? Yes. All right, uh, go ahead. So what had um, happened was previous Alder, Alder Duane had requested um, currently the, or not currently, previously the intersection at Deckner and Alpine uh, was a no uh, right turn, no stop. So if you're coming off of Deckner onto Alpine, you're turning right, you don't need to stop there. Um, that traffic in that area is heavy, especially during uh, the school year, because you have trouble down the road um, from Deckner. So you have a lot of kids and adults uh, not paying a whole lot of attention when they drive that, that intersection. Um, I'm not sure at whose request Alder Dwayne did this, pre uh, former Alder Dwayne did this, but he did request to have it looked at to make it a complete stop instead of a right turn non stop, make it a complete stop because a child had almost got hit at that intersection. Yeah. Um, my understanding is that a study, a 90 day study was done. Um, it was a one day study where they looked at it for a couple hours. Um, there was a cop there checking to see um, the compliance. And there was about a 50-50 compliance there. Residents in that area do want to keep that a complete stop, not revert back to a right turn, no stop. Um, they feel that traffic does slow down. Um, you know, right now they're getting used to the uh, the change. So hopefully compliance will get better. Um, if anything, residents in that area want to bring more attention to that stop. Maybe a flashing red stop sign. But I guess my request would be to um, deny this and keep it at a full stop instead of reverting back to the right turn, no stop. Okay, I, I want to do what you want here. So the motion is to remove the eastbound right turn, no stop. You don't want to remove that. You do, right? I, 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 what do, because, what do, it's, because the change is on a 90-day trial, mm -hmm. officially on the books, the trial period doesn't change the ordinance. So the okay. ordinance currently carries that intersection as right turn, no stop. Okay. This will officially amend it to a stop condition, which is what you want. The 90 day trial has expired. You okay. want it to become permanent. Okay. So we need to make this change. Do you, are you, 
you, you totally understand what the other person is saying. She wants it to be Deckner has a full yep. stop before making the right turn onto Alpine. Right. She mm -hmm. wants the 90-day trial to continue. Okay. That's what this does. So a second. We're going to remove the right turn. Right, no so we stop want to vote yes on this. Full stop. All right, mm -hmm. fine. Officially. Okay, that's already on the floor. All right. So we want to vote affirmatively on this, and that's going to get you what you want. Okay. Okay, I'm seeing other lights. So there's a, a, a motion and second to approve item six. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. And those opposed, nay. All right, the ayes have it. Item six been approved. Thank you. Tax Increment Districts Joint Review Committee, June 28th, 2018. All right, there's a motion, Alderman Scannell. Second, Alderman Galvin, uh, to approve uh, item U, the Tax Incremental Districts Joint Review Committee. All in favor of that motion, please signify by saying aye. aye. And those opposed, nay. Ayes have it. Item U has been approved. Receive and place on file building permit report for June 2018, municipal court report for June 2018. All right, so motion bill in the scan, second bill to person Dorf to receive and place on file the two reports stated by the clerk. Any discussion here? Seeing no lights, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. aye. And those opposed nays, ayes have it. Item V, receive and place on file has been approved. We're on to resolutions. You may under suspension of the rules adopt resolutions one through nine together with one roll call vote. All right, there's a motion by Alderman Scannell, second by Alderperson Dorf to suspend the rules for that purpose. All in favor of suspension, please signify by saying aye. aye. And those opposed nays, ayes have it. Motion to adopt. Motion to adopt. By Alderman Scannell, second by Alderman Stoyer. If you'd use the board, this is one through nine. So those pass on a vote of uh, 11 with one abstention. We're on to ordinances. First reading, you may under suspension of the rules advance ordinances 1 through 10 to a third reading. Okay, item 9, you want to take separately. Anything else? Number 3. Number three. So um, these are the first reading ordinances, I and mean, these are going to come back to see us again in a couple, well, the next month. But um, I need a motion and a second to advance the first reading ordinances. Belderman Stoyer, second of Belderman Galvin, and that's to advance 1, 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 10. So we have a motion and a second. Any discussion on those items? I understand three, eight, and nine have been pulled. Okay, all in favor of the remainder uh, of the first reading advancing those, uh, please signify by saying aye. Aye. And those opposed, nay. All right, so those have been advanced. We have to deal tonight yet with three, eight, and ten. What are your wishes regarding item three? Right. There's a motion by Alderman Scano, second by all the persons in Dorf. All the personal fave. I don't feel that if somebody wants alcohol, I believe that, I'm sorry, I think you should walk into the store and get it. I just don't like the idea of curbside picking up alcohol. It just, we promote too much alcohol here. If somebody's that serious, they want to buy alcohol, walk into the store and get it. Because I still believe that there isn't, you're not going to be able to guarantee that you can control who's getting this. I just I just have qualms on that. I don't think it's appropriate. Thank right. you. Thank you. Oops, oops. Anyone else want to comment? This is item three. This is an ordinance creating uh, a Green Bay Municipal Code relating to online ordering and curbside pickup of alcohol beverages. Uh, all the person Lafave, you're opposed to that. Yes. Anybody else want to comment on it? Oh, here you are. Okay. I didn't see any lights before. All right, Alderman Stoyer. 
Oh, hang on. I'm not so sure I'm in favor of this either, unless somebody can tell me otherwise. I just feel that it's, you know, there's plenty of plenty of time. You know, we had issues with uh, buying alcohol before 8 in the morning years ago, and, you know, there's plenty of opportunities to get alcohol in this town. So yeah. I agree with Alder Lefebvre on that as well. All right, thank you. Alderman Nicholson. Thank you, Mary. Where did this come from? Who presented this? Well, so staff is bringing this forward? No, our staff did not bring this forward. Okay, well, who did? I just want to ask. No one? Are you sure about that? How do you know that? I, I, I look, I got a little heartburn over this one, and, and I, I don't know, I thought, you chair P and W. I thought it came from staff because it didn't say who it came from, so I just assumed it came from staff. I thought we were getting ready for the internet age. I, I saw no reason. Uh, but did the request come? I, 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 our clerk is saying that she thought it came through uh, Walmart, but I don't. We also had Applebee's. This stuff doesn't just show up. Well, no kidding. That's why I thought it came from staff because there was no, no one came forward. Did, And yeah, I mean, Alderman Nicholson, I don't know. Well, Chris, someone had to bring something to your It's office. the latest thing. Pick and Save is doing it. All the grocery stores are doing it. So Walmart came forward and asked to do it. Okay. Well, that's what I wanted to know. Okay. Yeah, you do. So if this passed, how does this take place? You have someone that, how does it take place? Well, they wrote an ordinance. But I mean, what what action? They set up a stand on the corner. No. Okay. You want to answer that? Yeah. yeah. Um, so the way it's set up under the ordinance is uh, an existing business with a license. It has to actually have a, a licensed premises. Would be able to take orders online, and then you'd be able to drive and pick them up. It's usually part of a grocery program, and so. You can order your groceries and then pick them up at the, the curbside. They'll deliver them to your car. This is making it to where they can also do that with liquor. Okay, thank you. Do you want to speak again on it? Alderman Scanlon, did you want to speak again on it? Just briefly. Uh, and that, that was my assumption is that I knew there was uh, online. Uh, that's a new thing now, ordering groceries online. I thought this was just a part of that. And we wanted to regulate it. That's okay. all. Thank you. Alderman Johnson. Yeah, I just want to seek some additional clarity. So currently, are these grocery stores providing that service? <clears throat> My understanding is no, it's not currently permitted. Okay, so so to your knowledge, they're not doing it already where, where they're just seeking some clarity around the city ordinance so that they can do it legally? To my knowledge, I would have to double check with um, staff to verify that there isn't anything like that happening. But to my knowledge, no, this is something that would be new. Okay, so right now, if they were to do it, they would be in violation of city ordinance? Correct. Okay. Um, and so the way that this new ordinance is written, it would allow grocery stores to do it as part of perhaps a bigger package or maybe it's the only order. Would, would this also allow other facilities to do it? Is there any kind of permitting or regulation around this? Let me pull up the ordinance um, as drafted. I'm not the one who worked on it, so I can tell you the specifics of the ordinance, but I can definitely pull those up for you. Um, the, the second component of this is this is just the first reading. We don't take action on first readings because of our ordinance unless it's suspended by uh, a unanimous decision. And so what you're bringing up right now are questions that we can have for you at the next reading. So if you guys, guys need to make any amendments or if you want to send it back, that's that you have that information handy so you can make that decision at that time. But I can pull it up for you. So, so, I mean, if we just denied it today as part of the first reading, it's, it's history, it's toast. So you got to bring it back to P&W committee then for reconsideration? So what we've just discussed in the past is that the way this, the city's ordinance reads right now is first readings 
or every every ordinance is entitled to three readings. You can advance to the third one. You're not supposed to take action on anything until it has that third, potentially second reading instead. Um, and so the only way to do that, to take action on it tonight, would be to actually um, suspend the rules unanimously to do that. To take action on it? Correct. So we've already suspended the rules, right? No. no. Okay, because we pulled these out separately, is that why? Okay. Got it. Okay, thank you. Alderman Burnett? Um, I'm against it because it doesn't seem that, according to what we're hearing, there is a huge need. Businesses coming forward, contacting any alder, unless I'm mistaken. And uh, I would like to hear the reasoning, other than being cutting edge and ahead of uh, every you know policy out there that we are being proactive. I don't see a need to advance this, quite honestly, unless we're he hearing a huge outcry that this is needed. I don't think it's needed, so I'll vote against. Thank you. Right, that's all I got. No, I'll, you don't, but Alderman Stoyer. All right. Um, like I said, I'm against this too, but I guess the question I had is with this type of shopping, if you go and get your groceries and you run up and get them, you know, order online and you, you go get them, then you would have to park your car and then go inside to get your alcohol, right? It just you know what I'm saying. I think the reason you're doing it is to try to save time and be efficient and get out. And I understand the reasoning behind it, but like I said, it, there's still plenty, plenty of time to purchase alcohol any in all places. So I'm against it. Alderman Nicholson, do you want to speak again on this? No, I do not. All right. Alderman Gallon, I do not have your light on. Do I, I, I took it off. Oh, all right. So Sorry. we're going to vote on this. Um, let me think here. There wasn't, well, there was a motion to advance all of them, and then we pulled these three. Mm -hmm. So the motion to advance item three is what you're voting on. So there are two things you can do. One would be to advance it to the next reading. The second would be to suspend the rules, have to be done unanimously to take up this, this tonight. Motion will suspend the rules. So, okay. right. yeah. Yeah. so there's a, a, all right, let's, See how that works. There's a motion by Alderman Galvin, second by Alderman Nicholson, to suspend the rules to take action on this, but it's going to have to be unanimous. Okay? So let's do the motion first. So there's a motion, second, to suspend the rules. All in favor of suspending the rules for that purpose, please signify by saying aye. Aye. And those opposed, nay. Now, what is the motion you want to do, which has to be unanimous? Motion to deny. Second. All right, so we have a motion by Alderman Nicholson, uh, Alderman Galvin, second by Alderman Nicholson to deny item three. Did you want to say anything on it? All right, why don't you use your board on this, please? Yes, this is a deny. Yes, yes denies. denies. You're right. Okay. Yes, denies. There's a motion to deny. <laughs> So the, the decision to is not to be unanimous. Yeah. Huh? The, the vote itself does not have to be unanimous. The decision to take it up tonight had to be unanimous. Oh, okay. Two. Oh, all right. Alderperson Dorf, um, I, I just want to stand corrected on that. The motion to take action tonight had to be unanimous. Oh. Does that change anybody's motion to take it up tonight? This motion that we have right now does not have to be unanimous, and it's not going to be. All the person Dorf, after you vote. So that motion fails to advance on a vote of nine to three. To take it up. We all agreed to take it up. We didn't all agree on what to do. Let's move on to item eight. This, I need a motion to advance. This is the wheel tax. 
by Alder Person Gal Alder Alderman Scanlon, second by Alder Person Galvin. Alderman Vanderlees, this is yours. That was my question about the wheel tax. Pardon me? That was my question. I pulled number eight was about it was about the wheel tax. This would be the first reading of the general ordinance relating to the municipal vehicle registration fee, which was the wheel tax that we discussed last month. I, d I don't support the wheel tax, so okay. I'm going to be a no vote All on right. this. Thank you. All the person Lefebvre? Yes, on this wheel tax. Uh, it's concerning the people who've had to pay this year and last year. I've had several people contact me. And they're really upset. They're paying now. They're going to have to pay. And then if this goes through, they're going to be charged for this wheel tax. And if that goes through with the wheel tax, they're going to be paying for, could be 20 years, you know, for that road. They're not going to get any benefit and away from the wheel tax. So they're a little upset about having to pay full cost for the road, especially this year. And the ones that had to be done in my district this year tied to Webster. I couldn't put it off for next year so that they could get this benefit of the wheel tax. So they're very upset about it. So I would like, I don't know where it can go, where we can discuss a little bit something that we can make some arrangements for these people. Some said, well, They'd be, they'd be willing to pay something, but they don't feel it's fair that now they're paying the full cost for the road, and next year they got to start paying the wheel tax. So, and also um, some, some even requested to extend the payments. Ten years would help them. There's different things that people have asked me for, so I would like to have some discussion on this that we can make some amendments to this. I don't, I don't know where to go. Who I would bring this forward to? Um, well, I, I, I just want to say, look, I'm one of those people. Um, I think that was all discussed. Are we going to go back on this? We're going to go back six months, one year, three years, and I, I think the decision was to do a wheel tax effective. You know, this first reading, mm -hmm. we do it in the third reading go to the DOT, and it's you know October, November when you start registering your vehicles. So. I think, I don't want to tell you, I think we've been through this, but. Just for clarity's sake, do we not need to unanimously approve this again to be able to take up the issue? So, so the first reading is your opportunity to find out what public comment is, if there's any issues with it, ask staff to bring some amendments to it, um, and you know, really just get some, some of those basic issues out of the way. Amendments to it? But as long as you're not taking any action on it, you don't have to do anything to, to suspend the rules other than just to advance it to the, to the third reading. The motion is to advance it. Yeah, it's just sending it to the third reading. Mm -hmm. I still would like to say, you know, I support the wheel tax. I do. Because I haven't heard of anything in place of it that would help future road people with, you know, streets. I do believe in the wheel tax. I like to vote to advance the wheel tax. But I'm just saying I have people, you know, are a little upset that this didn't pass before, <laughs> you know. So that's my concern. I don't know what to do about about it. Thank you. Well, the you have the ordinance, right? Yeah. 1918. How do you want to amend it? I mean, it's. I don't know what you want to do either. You have the ordinance. It's it's right in front of you. Right. Right. So let me go to. I'd like to amend it, but. I don't know if that's a request I can make now. The proper procedure would be to ask staff to look into specific items um, and identify okay, some so amendments. Would, so I'll write it up here and direct it to staff? No, you can just talk to staff directly. Um, okay. So this is okay. already going to, the, it has to go to a third reading or it has to be adopted right. unanimously tonight. Okay. Um, and so you can ask staff to, to look into some options for you. This way you have some more information when you are making for, the final For vote. the next reading? Correct. Okay, thank you. Alderman Stoyer. I guess the question I had on that, um, you know, as well as, let's say for Webster Avenue, you're talking about the east side of the road, uh, those buildings were raised, correct? I mean, most of them, or will be. Uh, so the, the assessment, the special assessment, are you talking about uh, on the west side of the street? 
pretty much. I mean, those would be the homes that would be. I guess I would like to know what what the assessment would be along along the west no, no, side no. of Webster. No, it's not Webster. No, oh, you're it's not um, okay. Saint George, Saint George Street, and um, oh, what's the other one? Smith. Smith. It's Smith. Right. Thank you. So I, I don't know if I could ask uh, Director Grenier about that. I, you know, I, I realize there might be some other monies coming in besides city, you know, for for Webster Avenue. But I just wanted to know, um, right now, what that might cost, you know, or what what are the uh, special assessments? Let's say right now, it, I mean, we haven't passed the wheel tax completely yet. But if this goes through, you know, if we have to wait. What's the cost for the owners along Webster? Is that pertinent to this conversation or not? Well, I don't know if it's pertinent or not, but those costs won't be computed until we're a lot closer to construction. Right. That's yeah. okay. Well, I'm just you know, I'm just seeing if there's anything out there that we can point our finger to on this. One of the di one of the differences that you will see currently. The way, assess the way special assessments for pavement construction work, all properties have to be levied equally. But if there are city-owned properties, we don't levy an assessment against ourselves. There's nothing to collect. Right. Well, okay? The, the way that this ordinance is written, if there are city-owned properties, the equivalent dollar value of what would have been assessed will be taken out of the wheel tax money and put into the construction fund. So we're actually going to be realizing a revenue stream on city-owned properties, which we didn't realize previously. Okay. Following your logic, on a project like a Webster Avenue, where fully one half of the accessible footage is going to be owned by the city of right. Green Bay, we now have a revenue stream to pick up what would have been assessed and would have been lost through special assessments. Okay. All right. that's, that's good, thank you. So there's a, a motion and a second to advance item eight. And if you want to use the board here. that passes on a vote of 10 to 2. So we'll see that next month. And uh, Alder Person Lefebvre, there's going to be some small amendments to it. Let's work on that. OK. We're on to item 9. What are your wishes regarding item 9? Second. By Alderman Scano. Seconded by Alderman Stoyer. Alderman Scano, you pulled this. Go ahead. Uh, in talking with staff, it would be very beneficial if we would suspend the rules unanimously and adopt this tonight so that it would, uh, we'd adopt it after our first reading and it wouldn't go on to a second or third. The reason for that is there are a number of items that are waiting uh, to go on our agenda as the newly uh, reconstituted protection and policy. And uh, the more, quicker we could get to that, the better, uh, the better it would be. So I don't know that uh, going to second and third reading really makes a bunch of difference for this uh, policy. We're not really slipping anything past uh, uh, the public here. This is really for how we do our own business, and it uh, uh, helps ourselves here. Uh, so staff, I've been speaking with staff. Um, I'm going to ask that we um, unanimously uh, vote to suspend the rules and then vote on just adopting this ordinance after its first reading here. There's a motion by Alder Person Dorf, seconded by Alderman Galvin to suspend the rules. All in favor of suspension, please signify by saying aye. Aye. And those opposed, nay. No. Okay, the rules aren't suspended. Sorry. So you want to make a motion to advance? I already did. Okay. So we'll go back to that. Go back to that? All right. So there's a. a we'll go to the second reading then. Well, you can make a motion to suspend the third reading. So to go oh. next month. So. Oh, okay, yeah. Yep. Right. So that's the motion. Yep. So there's a motion and a second on the floor to advance item, uh, was that nine? Item nine uh, to a third reading. 
All in favor of that motion, please signify by saying aye. Aye. And those opposed, nay. All right, guys have it. So we'll see this in a month. We're on to referral of petitions and communications. We will not accept any late communications you may have. All the person in the fave? Yes, um, I have a request to approve minute services. Request to look at overnight parking. Um, example is I have an eight unit apartment was approved with eight parking spaces only by the city. So they cannot have overnight guests, overnight speak, uh, parking on the streets for apartment units. Special situation here, can we make exceptions for this eight unit apartment as the city approved? They should have known that there, that there wasn't enough room for the parking. It should not have been approved. Okay. <laughs> Second one, I was I was said yes, I should bring this to uh, INS, discuss options for partial reimbursement or temporary waiver of wheel tax for residential properties that are paid road improvement assessments in the past three years. I'll make that one. In the past what? Three years. Mm -hmm. How Are many years? Past three years. <laughs> well, you didn't give me the raise, so. All right, anything else? Okay. We're going, all right, wait, we're not done. Alder, no, 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 no. Alderperson Corpus Dax, Alderperson Dorf, all have, Alderperson Corpus Dax, want to go to you? Uh, this is, I guess, referred back to council, request for reconsideration of the council's June 19th decision on the report of the ethics board dated uh, June 14th, based on reading the opinion of the lawyer representing the ethics board. All right, thank you. Alder person. So, oh. we, we had addressed this once before um, that the way this, the council has adopted it, I think it was Alderman Nicholson who had one that came in the, the day um, at the following meeting. And because the council has been operating in that, in that fashion that you can reconsider at that next meeting, that's been allowed by this council. Again, stuff that we can we can change, but we've been doing it this way. That's a that's an ordinance, not a a procedural All right. issue. All the person door. This is uh, to, to parks um, to consider putting in a baseball field at Red Smith Park at the request of the neighbors in the area. We're there. Sorry. Yep. Um, there was a request for reconsideration. There was a request for reconsideration some time ago. All right, hang on, you guys. We're almost done. Um, there was a request for reconsideration a while back. I don't recall. I just remember this request for reconsideration. Um, I believe so. I don't recall specifically. No, no, no. no. Last term. Oh. It's been a long time. All right. I, d I don't remember. It was okay. a long time ago. Yeah. Hang on. No. We're not there yet. We're not there yet. Okay. Last time this came up. Can you, I, this isn't, you talk to her about that. I, I okay. I need a motion. No, no, no. I need a motion and a second to refer all petitions and communications oh, to the proper okay. authorities. Second. There's a motion by Alderman Scannell, second by Alderman Galvin. All in favor of referral, please signify by saying aye. 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 Now, by Alderman Scannell. Second. Second by Alderperson Dorf. All in favor of German, please signify by saying aye. Aye. And those opposed nays, ayes have it. Whoops. We got somebody yelling. I don't care. So what, uh, how, do you, how do you get out of the meeting again? Oh. And leave meeting, leave meeting, computer. I, I didn't do that last time.